Um, Oh, Shana, thank you so much for being a member for 18 months. You beautiful being this one. It's all for you. Mwah. Absolute trance. Thank you so much for the noble lasso. Okay. It's a me, a Mario. Thank you so much for the 18 months, you beautiful bean. Distracted me from writing my bachelor thesis. Well, Bach, you know that uh, this is going to be way more productive than writing any thesis. You're going to have a master's in <laughs> mediocre memology. <laughs> Terry Envy, thank you so much for the nine months. You a beautiful being this one. I thought, mm. uh, John Schmidt, thank you so much for gifting membership. Uh, God, I haven't even turned on the camera yet, okay? And I'm already struggling to keep up with chat. This, this, this is unacceptable behavior. By the way, chat, one thing that is illegal to do here is to say, oh, whoa in the chat. You're not allowed to oh whoa in the chat, so please, please do not oh whoa in the chat. Thank you. Olivia, thank you so much for the noble lasso. Um. Oh no! No! I told you not to oh whoa. Duh! This is disgusting behavior. Oh my god, I am absolutely outraged and flabbergasted. Oh, oh no, I can't believe you've done um. this. Rusty, thank you so much for the 38 months. Oh my god, I've been... <laughs> Yeah, we're getting to the point now where some of like the the sub uh, streaks are literal years, which is kind of nuts. Like, what's that? That's like three years. It's more than three years. Um, that is insane. Um, um, Alrighty. Well, it's time. To, oh my god. Okay, check this out. Let's see if this works now. I'm very rusty with streaming, but doing. Oh my god, it looks decent. Welcome in, everyone, you beautiful beans. I do hope you enjoy your stay. Sadly, I don't have my, my secondary camera plugged in, I think, because it kept, like, bugging out. I was actually planning, because one thing I experimented with a while ago was, like, a dual uh, camera angle thing, so I could, like, switch between them for comedic effect. The only difficult thing is that the second camera is just like some random webcam, so it's really difficult to make it look the same as this one, that's like a proper camera. So I was thinking about splurging and getting one more of the exact same ones, just so I can do like, silly pans to the side, and for it to actually look good. <laughs> anyway, I was thinking about playing a little bit of music. Oh wow, that is some vibes. Oh, yes, indeed, the sounds like when you're sitting on the beach. The sun is setting. You have a loved one beside you. You're holding hands. It's very romantic. You feel a bit of gas building up. You're nervous. This is your first date in quite a while. Oh, my God, they look so pretty. And you are so gassy. Ah, bollocks. This is difficult. What do I do now? And then you see, like, the vein in your forehead starting, like, dun, 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 dun. and they're like, um, are you okay? And you're like, mm-hmm. Yes, I'm just gonna go over there for a bit, and then you slip away from the other side of the hill, and you rip one out, and it's really, really loud, which isn't good. 
and you come back and be like, oh, I just got a phone call, and they were like, I heard everything. <laughs> and they're like, ah. <laughs> but it's because I'm so comfortable with you and I feel natural. That's why. And they're like, yeah, that's smooth. And then you get married. Okay, anyway, so, uh, how is everyone doing today, you absolutely beautiful beings? Confusing the polarity. Thank you so much for being like, oh my, it's so much. It's Jesus Christ. No, no, I just look back at the chat and everything is just on fire. I don't know if I'm here. I should be doing work right now. Kylie, this is way more productive than work. Thank you so much for the royal lasso. That's way too generous. Pelfrey, thank you so much for the for the for the lasso thing. And Kelly, thank you so much for gifting five memberships. And unholy, thank you so much for the vibe. Hello, click current to my college campus and all the big gasp when I saw you starting a live. Heck yes. Welcome in your beautiful being. Olivia, thank you so much for being a noble lasso. Whew, okay, we sorta of caught up, I think. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So how is everyone doing? Hi, Click, got a question. Have you heard of Jack the Whipper? Yes, I have. I keep getting tagged in all the posts of people being like, they look like you. They look like they could be my, like, blonde older brother. It's really funny. I even think Jack the Whipper had a TikTok where they reacted to people saying they had lookalikes. And they said Jack the Whipper looked like, for example, MatPat. I think they said he looked similar to... David Tennant in certain roles. It was something like that. And then the last one on the list was me. <laughs> so that was pretty wild. They saw my own face coming up on that list and be like, yeah, some people have said I looked like this meme dude, the click. And I'm like, oh, hell yeah, that's me. So, <laughs> so I think he has at least heard my name as well, which is really funny. Although I don't think he really knows who I am, if that makes sense. It's a little bit of a different niche online, but... Uh, he has at least been bothered enough by people, so he has been forced to read my name, so that is excellent. Ah, Klaus, thank you so much for the 17, and Silly, thank you so much for the 2, and Tea Time, thank you so much for the 17-month membership, and Hi, thank you so much for the 100 dikr. I am going to a furry con, and I blame you, that is perfectly valid. Enjoy your time, you wonderful bean. Oh yes, indeed. A Pelifer, thank you so much for the 2, A from Hello from Australia, should be asleep. Oh yeah, I, uh... I was, I was saying hi to an Australian friend a while ago, and I learned some Australian slang just to say hi to them, and it actually worked because they understood everything I said. It was like, uh, what was it? I had to skip Brecky to make it to the Bobby, and I wish the Bogans kept their ankle biters at home. Did I, did I impress you with my Aussie slang? Yayit? Oh, Brecky! Yeah, Brecky! Hell yeah, I love Brecky. It's such a good word, isn't it? Ah, it's absolutely amazing. Recently watched a German video about terrible YouTube ads and was surprised to channel you several clips of you. Yeah, I saw that too. That's the same thing. People kept tagging me on it. It's so funny. It was it was one about bad ads. <laughs> and they used one of my stupid intro skits for one of my bad ads videos when I'm walking around being like, uh, this is how Mafia works, characters. And I'm like, <laughs> level one thug. <laughs> You know, one of, one of those ones. It was really funny. It was funny to see the like those clips being shared. I really like it when people meme on me. It's very funny. When are you getting a fursuit, dude? Shrapnel? I don't know what that word is. People keep coming into my chat, and I'm not sure if it's just because I'm Swedish and I don't know all the words in the world, or if people are just trying to gaslight me into believing these words actually mean something when you're just making it up. Shame on you. Uh, CMOS ASMR, thank you so much for being a member. I'm happy your streaming makes a bad day better. Oh, that's so sweet. You're making my day better, too. Let's see. It's getting a little bit darker. It was a very bright day today because it was sunny for once in Sweden, but now it's getting a little bit dark, so I'm gonna turn on my little studio lights. No more natural light for me today. I looked out the window. That was that was the natural night light dose for me. Great see how click. Merci für alles. Oh, that's really sweet. Thank you, Hopeless Geek, you beautiful bean. And I do hope you have a nice vibe in Switzerland. Hey. Say banana pudding if you see this. Ken? Why are you eating banana pudding? Mm. Ah, that is good. I hit the gym today. I hit the gym today. I was watching a YouTube video. Um, after I hit the gym, I was having lunch. And then I was watching a YouTube video while having lunch. And it's like a bunch of like uh, fitness influencers and they were doing like a, like a challenge thing on a street in like LA or something like that where a lot of people are, are working out a lot. And uh, they had like a contest, like how much can you, how much can you like barbell? You know, how much can you, uh, what, what's, I completely lost the name. But yeah, when you lift shit for your, for your bicep basically. Um, with the, I completely lost the name. 
Oh my god, it's embarrassing. Why, why, why is it always like this when you're live? So anyway, it was really funny because while I was eating, I was like, damn, I want, I kind of want to try this to see how far I would make it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, no, it's not bench press. It's just, it's just when you, yeah, the biceps curl. Yeah, that's the one. Thank you. The bicep curl. So they had like a few different levels. So I think they started at like 50 pounds and this is for both arms, right? Like 50 pounds for one arm is already quite heavy, but, but it started at 50 pounds and then it jumped to like 100 pounds and 150 pounds. So, you know, 50 pounds, easy pieces, and then I tried the 100 pounds, which is heavy, but I can still do it. It's not something I would do for, like, proper reps, but, you know, it can be done. 150? <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> I can easily bench press 150, but I can't curl 150. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> Which makes sense, because the people in the video who could actually curl 150 were, like, legit big dudes. Like, I'm not a small guy, but they were, like, legit fucking big. Their arms were like this, you know? <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, nah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm gonna break something. <laughs> hey, Kling, how are you? Hope you're doing well. Remember to hydrate or dehydrate. They didn't actually say that. I, I filled that in. Uh, take care of yourself. Oh, that's really sweet. Thank you. Thank you for the 25... Eight? I have no idea what currency that is. Uh, thank you so much. Hello from USA. Heartland. Love your videos. Pan Ace Kitty. Welcome, you beautiful bean. Uh, Samuel. Thank you so much for the seven months, you beautiful bean. Mwah. Mm. I clicked on click stream because something clicked in my brain, so I clicked. It's a lot of click. It's awesome hearing the click swear. I'm a bit less careful in streams because it's like if YouTube goes in and demonetizes a VOD because of swearing, it's like eh doesn't matter so much if YouTube goes in and like demonetizes a proper like full video that has been you know collecting materials recorded edited fix the thumbnails etc that's kind of like what keeps the channel going then it's like oh oh this sucks this is like three days of work just down the drain <laughs> so so with live streams it's it's a bit less crucial if that makes sense you know um, and like that's just me you know my my channel is relatively relatively easy to run in the way that it doesn't have a large production like a lot of channels you know when it's like really expensive to produce videos then it's like a proper risk i mean for me it's still you know it costs a bit to produce videos obviously like it, you can't do it for free but uh it doesn't it doesn't make it or break it so to say but it still sucks <laughs> Hey, we back on YouTube. I just want to say I found that I might have an undiagnosed depression for the last two years, which is now potentially beneficial because it means uh, meds may help. That is that is a good realization to come to. Thank you so much, Flash the Monkey. Beautiful being this one is all for you. Mwah. I wish you the best of luck. It may good. The pen is kitty. Thank you so much for being a lasso as well, you amazing bean. Mm. So easy to zone out and just hear you talk. Oh, yes, indeed. Just sit back and let the vocal cords just guide you through oblivion. Oh, yes, indeed. I should make more, like, ASMR videos. But I just feel like the ASMR industry is, like, light years ahead of anything I would do now. You know, they are like, here's this prop set with, like, proper cosplay and stuff for, like, thousands of dollars. And I'm like, uh, Swedish guy reading Swedish things in whispers? <laughs> <laughs> ah, almost got it. Hi, Click. Love your videos. Do you have any gym tips? I'm brand new to the gym. Thank you. Ren, thank you so much for the five. I mean, I always preface any kind of tips I have for health or workouts with the fact that this is just stuff I do for fun for myself. I would consider myself a relatively active person. Like, I go to the gym. I run a bit. I go climbing sometimes. I ski once a year. So, you know, I would consider myself an active person, but I'm not, like, I'm not a personal trainer or anything like that. But I would say... If you're just getting in to like working out or fitness or whatever it is, I would say make it easy for yourself. I, the mistake I see the most with people that want to get started is that they make it too complicated. You know, this is this is like the um, the very stereotypical thing. For example, when people have New Year's resolutions, they say like, "Oh, now this New Year, New Year, New Me, I'm gonna work out five times a week. I'm gonna go to this fancy gym that's an hour away from where I live." And then, you know, all of a sudden you have a little bit of cold and you fall out of the routine and you never go back. Or, you know, after a couple of weeks, you're too busy and you can no longer do it. And the whole thing just, just fails, basically. So my first tip would be make it easy. When I first started, like, working out more intensely, one of the first things I did was replacing my train ticket that I used to go to the office and also uni back in the day uh, with a bike. 
But this also, of course, heavily depends on where you live and if you have decent bike paths. And, you know, if, if you live too far away from work, for example, it can be difficult to replace that with, like, a two-hour bike ride, you know. But that was one thing I did that worked for me. Very nice, because then you have, like, one half hour there, one half hour back every single day on the bike. Did wonders for my stamina and for my legs and everything. Um, otherwise, I would recommend getting some easy stuff to do at home as well. That's one of the things that made me do it. Now you can't see it because it's not in frame. Hold on, let me zoom out. One of the things I can recommend is one of these boys. It's very nice. And if it's a bit heavy for you when you're starting, get a rubber band as well. And you can like have the rubber band on your feet and stuff. And you can like do a lot of things. And a couple of free weights. And with that, you can do like most things, honestly. Um, going to the gym is also very productive. But those are things that can make it easier to be regular regarding starting fitness stuff like i said this isn't like a personal trainer thing or anything but for me it really helped to make it easy make the beginning bump as small as possible and then you can start scaling it up because then it also becomes easier and it's more fun and after you've done it for a couple of months you realize like wow i'm actually getting stronger and then you start ramping it up but make the beginning easy for yourself you don't have to go from zero to a hundred you know and a one life advice in general when it comes to making progress, when it comes to either fitness or work or anything, is that I think we're very eager to see everything as glass half empty. Like imagine you were planning to go to the gym today and have like this thick one and a half hour workout, but instead you just did some push-ups at home. That is still a glass half full. You, st you still did more than zero, you know? So I think it's important to like reward yourself with the things you did rather than the things you didn't do, if that makes sense. Uh, that was something I learned a lot with YouTube, because the YouTube dashboards are really eager to tell you when the video, for example, is performing under average. Like, the video I released yesterday, for example, it's like, oh my god, it's 2,000 views less than a video normally has after this time. Oh my god, everything is on fire, red arrows, oh my god, your career is burning. But when you take a step back, you're like, but, but hold on a second, that's like a couple of percent difference, and it's still better than not releasing a video at all. It's still a net positive, you know? I didn't lose anything from publishing this video maybe it gained a little bit less than the previous one, but it's still a gain, you know? So I think that's a mindset that's easy to fall into with various things. Uh, let's see. Um, you should listen to the rubber bandits when using rubber bands at the gym. It totally sets the mood. <laughs> oh, that's smooth. Rubber band is a good thing. That's always what I bring with me when I travel. Have you heard about the game Content Warning? It's supposed to be really fun. Yes! I have heard it. We're, we're planning to play it with a few friends. So hopefully for stream as well. It's going to be fun. Uh, Witchy World, thank you so much for being a lasso. Andrea, thank you so much for being a noble lasso. Let's see what else. Silver Ace of Spades, thank you so much for being a lasso. You beautiful bean. And Mario, thank you so much for the five. What have you been looking forward to lately? Ooh. Summer. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Winter was really boring this year. I'm looking forward to summer. And just like going places, being warm. You know, not bringing five jackets with me all the time. I'm looking forward to summer. Oh, my God. It's Rebecca. I bought a mini mango and ESD for me in long-distance BF. Made them kiss before. <gasps> that is so sweet. Thank you so much for the fire, Rebecca. That is an amazing story. Oh, my God. If you have pictures of that, post them on the subreddit. I would love to see them. That is amazing. Oh, I missed something. Hold on. Your demon plushie is going to a satanic temple for a photo op with Baphomet. That sounds amazing. Oh, my God. Share that as well. I would love to see you. Thank you so much, Horror Man Mike. Mwah. My friend asked me why I watched the click so much. This intellectual human being is why. Well, I know basic math. Apart from when I when I dyslexia too hard, then I don't. <laughs> click, I just published my first set of short stories. Hey, that is really cool. Congratulations. That is amazing. You remember me. You promised to send me a MacBook Pro because I've been subscribed for so long. We had a chat. I gave you an address, but you never sent me anything. Is this how you treat your fans? I mean, you either spoke to a scammer or you're just pulling my leg. But in the case that you are being serious, if you got like one of those comments in the comment section that is like, click one, two, three, four, five. Oh my God, f you won uh, this, uh, hit me up on Telegram, it's a scam. I don't send MacBooks to people that watch my videos. Um, sorry. <clears throat> Angie, thank you so much for being a royal lass for 25 months. Hi, Click, how are you doing? I am now six-week post-spinal surgery and wanted to say thank you for getting me through the first week of my recovery. Sending love and hugs. I do wish you the best of luck. Recovery can be really boring, really tedious, and really painful. I do hope you get through it okay, Angie. 
It's raining down in Africa today. Can you speak an African language? No, I can't, sadly. Would you like to visit African countries? I hope you get all the happiness today. I would like to, yeah. I have a few places that have like, I have a travel bucket list um, that I would like to get through at some point. Some of them are like longer trips as well. So right now it's very difficult to do with the job I have. Like YouTube is both a blessing and a curse when it comes to like traveling, for example, because on the positive side, it's really easy to take a few days off. Like if I wake up on a Wednesday and I'm just like, you know what, I'm not feeling it, this is bogus, I can just take the day off and it's fine. Being away for more than like a week is really difficult because how I do it now usually is that I pre-record stuff, I send it to my editor, Sam, who I work pretty closely with, and he sends back the videos while I'm traveling and then I work in the evenings while I'm traveling to like make thumbnails and you know, make sure everything is fine. So that kind of works because then you only have to work like a couple or three hours a day or something when you're traveling, which is fine. But if you're going to be away for longer, you have to pre-record a ridiculous amount of stuff. So you would have to have a backlog of like 10 videos, uh, which, uh, which is really difficult because uh, gathering materials, recording and everything is hard. It's really difficult to record more than one video a day because of like materials, you need to fix everything, edit thumbnails, etc, etc. I think even when it comes to content like mine, which is, how should I put this, on the lower end of the hierarchy of complexity when it comes to production, it still takes a long time to do if you want to do it right. Um, and it's like everything from reading up to things you bump into in posts to like thinking about like, okay, what joke should I have? Editing it, cutting stuff afterwards because it doesn't turn out good in edit. Spending uh, way too many hours on polishing a thumbnail, coming up with good titles. Um, YouTube is surprisingly time-consuming. It's wild. So, uh, yeah, that's the downside. But I do have a bunch of travel bucket list things that I would like to do. But some of them are, like, a bit longer, so we'll see how I, how I can figure it out. Or maybe do it when I retire. <laughs> Ryan, thank you so much for being a Nobel Lasso. You're beautiful, Bean. Champ, hey, Clicky, can you tell me how I smell nice today? Champ, you smell absolutely amazing today. And don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. Oh, yes. Glow emotional support team is on the way. You turned my kid and consequently me into furries. And we have found a home in the fandom. Oh, hell yeah. I think, I think like fandoms online can be a pretty magical place. I think the thing to look out for in any fandom is that it has its quirks, and that goes for any fandom online. But if you find like the right people in the right kind of circle, my experience is that it's usually quite fun. Is Cerberus Duck still happening? Yeah, I've been working on a little design for Cerberus Duck. It's gone for you through iterations, but I have a teaser up for it in my next video. There's a teaser where I just accidentally show it for a bit, ooh, uh, but uh, I'm polishing the design a bit. I still have a couple of things I'm a bit unsure about, but I would say the design is like 90% there, you know? It's 90% there. Right now I'm just figuring out, like, what the various heads should have on top of their heads. Like, I want to, I'm thinking if the angry head should have a couple of small red horns, and if the neutral one should just have a little tuft, um, but, you know, not so it's too much clutter, but so it kind of balances out with a bit of personality. So... Small polish is the stage it's at, basically. GZ loves AI. Thank you so much for the five dollars. Or maybe it's GZ loves Al. Thank you so much for the five dollars, you beautiful bean. Mwah. Andrea, thank you so much for the five. What is your travel bucket list? Have you ever been to Nashville, Tennessee? That's where I'm from. I don't have Nashville on it specifically, but I do have uh, New Zealand I would like to go to. Japan, Australia. I have a couple of locations that would be cool to visit in Africa. Um, I've been a lot in Europe. Not everywhere, of course. I have a couple of places in Europe I would still like to go to. I would like to do a proper, like, trip through the US. I did one with family many years ago. It was like a two or two and a half week trip. And we went through, like, New York, uh, LA, Las Vegas even, briefly. I've been to Miami, I've been to Key West. Um, so I've been around the U.S., but not in recent years. I haven't traveled, like, independently in the U.S., so that's something I would like to do. I was actually meaning to go travel through Canada and U.S. in 2020, but then COVID happened, and then, like, everything has kind of been procrastinated because work got really busy. Ah. So I have a few things. I have a few things on my bucket list that will be really fun to do. Have you been to Switzerland, the best country in the world? <laughs> I am to Switzerland often. I have some family down there, so I go visit often. Last time I was there was 
just a couple of weeks ago. I went skiing. Uh, it was very fun. It was very fun. I think, was it two years ago? I even recorded the video in Switzerland while I was skiing. That was pretty fun. <laughs> Clicky, I don't know if you remember me, but I suggested to get a Furby once. I'm now taking it upon myself to suggest cool stuff each stream. Ooh! Today's podcast called the Magnus Archives is great. It's gay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I should really get a Furby, shouldn't I? I don't think I have a Furby. I had one when I was a kid. Have you considered going to Czech Republic for a trip destination? It's a beautiful here for the most part. Yeah, I have. I have, yes. That's actually on the list. Um, so, the list is growing rapidly, isn't it? <laughs> Saswati, thank you so much for the 29. Mwah. Watching Click from the Netherlands while st sticking stitches in my head. From which side of Sweden are you? Do you have problems with the snowfall from yesterday? I think it snowed in a lot of places in Sweden yesterday. But it depends on how, how north or, or south you are uh, sometimes. Sweden is a surprisingly long country. Elf Nicole, thank you so much for being a lasso. You're beautiful being this one. is all for you. Mwah. Mm. Clicky Thicky, this is my first time seeing you live, United States. Yeah, that's the tricky thing with streaming. Like, how do you match time zones? But I found this to be, like, the best time for streaming in general for me. Because it's not too late, because otherwise I'm a total wreck the day after if I stream all the way till midnight. It's surprisingly exhausting. And, but if I stream earlier than this, the American audience are, like, still asleep. But if I stream later than this, the Europeans start going to bed. <laughs> so this is, like, the perfect time. Like, the Americans have woken up. Or they can watch me during, like, their lunch break or something. And the Europeans are just coming home from work. So it's like, this, this is a good time. It's a good time. Hell yeah. Out of curiosity, you would be interested in playing riff tracks with my wife. And I don't know what that is, though. Riff tracks? I would have to look it up. I have no idea what it is. And Click, how do you feel about Sweden sending Norwegian artists in for... I guess ESK stands for Eurovision Song Contest this year? I have not been keeping up with Eurovision since I was like 15, fam. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> oh yeah, I've never seen you lie before. Being honest, I've only started watching you like last month. Oh yeah, I haven't been streaming a lot the last few weeks or so. No particular reason, I think. I've just been doing other stuff and then I was... Well, I was traveling for a week, and then I was sick for a week, so... <laughs> and then, even after I was sick, my nose was still a bit stuffy and stuff, which meant that I could, like, you know, pop a couple of pills and have a tea and push myself through a recording, but it wasn't so enjoyable to sit for, like, a couple hours and stream, so... It's been, it's been a minute, but uh, I do enjoy streaming, it's fun. It's a nice way to catch up with the community, or just game. Czech Republic Mansion, yeah, I love Brazil! Blah! Ah, r r r eh? Thank you so much for being a lasso, you beautiful bean. Mwah. SJ Hockey. Come to New Jersey if you ever visit NY again. We are known for our unique shore towns, and we have over 100 miles, 160 kilometers of beaches to visit. That is really cool. That sounds like a good destination for, like, a road trip. Oh, hell yeah. I discovered my kitten is intersex, has both set of gents. They are half tabby, half wildcat. What name is good alt name ideas? Oh my god, so they're like... They're like half, 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 half. That's pretty cool. Can you do something with that? Something, something like, uh... I don't know, something playing with the number four would be cool? Or something playing with the number quarter? Or half, half? <laughs> That's pretty cute. That's pretty cute. Character AI, please. Oh, you mean like one of those chat apps that people are making? I I'm not... I'm not sure about that, fam. <laughs> I have a question for you. What time is it in Sweden? I'm also learning Swedish right now. Love you, Brutus. Keep up the good works. And right now, it's almost six in the evening. But learning Swedish, that's nice. I, I do hope you enjoy it. I'm not sure if it's the most, like, useful language, internationally speaking. It's pretty small, but it's very fun to learn new things. It's good to, like, keep up with, with brain activity, so to say. Let's see, maybe I, can, maybe I can switch these around. Is it easier to read the chat on this screen? Maybe. Let's see, can I zoom this in a bit? Oh, I can. Oh my god, it's so much easier to read. Hell yeah. Yes, another YouTube stream catching what I can as we head down the Grand Canyon. 
Oh my god, that's another thing that would be cool to visit, isn't it? Service sucks here. Thanks for being awesome, Mr. Funny Meme Guy. <laughs> well, thank you so much for the noble last week. Beautiful. Mm. Oh, Quinny, thank you so much for the 10. If you're interested in psychological horror games and insane family, I recommend a controversial game called The Coffin of Andy and Lele. Oh yeah, isn't that the one that was like hyper controversial on Twitter and social media for like months because it had some uh, relationship related insinuations regarding the siblings? Right? Wasn't wasn't that the whole thing? It goes into really deep stuff and makes you want to vomit. Yeah, th I think that's the one. Yeah, that seems vaguely familiar. Uh, James Bales, thank you so much for being a last year. Beautiful bean. <gasps> and Mega John, thank you so much for gifting 20. You always do this. You always do this. Absolute rascal. Thank you so much for gifting 20 memberships. That's way too sweet. By the way, if you didn't know this, if you have a membership on the channel, gifted or otherwise, you can actually go to the Discord, become a member, and then if you link your YouTube account, you will actually get special roles for your membership. It's pretty cool. And then all the peasants will be like, and Mega, you get Cool color. It's absolutely amazing. Omega, very nice. Goodbye, Moonies, but I think any words with quad would be good for a cat. I'm personally like quad because squid quad. Squad. That's pretty cute. Squad. It's like a pun, but it's also just, you know, what up, fam? That's cool. I'm not sure. Goodbye, Money. <laughs> Click, would you want to go to the UK? I probably should, yeah. I've been to the UK a few times. I would like to go back to England in a few places. I would love to visit uh, visit Ireland again. I haven't been there in a long time. I love Ireland, it's so nice. And uh, I would love to visit Scotland. It looks so beautiful. Speaking of places in Europe, I have been to, but not in a very long time. Hello from the US, my mom and I love the bingos! Rubrix Queen, thank you so much for the last week, beautiful bean. I'm so glad to hear you enjoy the bingos. Hell yeah, I feel a little bit insane when I sit and like make bingo cards for memes and like cursed posts, but it's really fun. <laughs> hey Click, wanted to let you know that your accidental ally videos made me realize I'm trans. So thank you for the bottom of my heart. James, that is amazing. Thank you so much for the five. I do wish you the best in your journey. That is so cool. Figuring out yourself is always like a very gradual journey in life, whatever it happens to involve. Moonsification, thank you so much for getting 10 memberships. My god, we're gonna fill up the whole Discord with new YouTube members. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. What a shame. The bingos are my fave ones. Yeah, people really like the bingos. I, I, I got the inspiration from Jack's films when he was doing the bingo stuff on his second channel. And then I was like, damn, this is really fun. I, I could kind of do this for like memes and the subreddits that are a bit predictable maybe isn't the right word, but when you have a repeat of certain themes. And uh, it's been really fun, honestly. It's been really fun. I've seen other people do like bingo stuff too with various content. It's really, it's a good vibe. It's a good vibe. Special occasion today or is just BSing with your fans. Also, hello world. Thank you so much for the fight. Welcome in. Um, I honestly, just BSing with fans, honestly. <laughs> Might play some games later. Might have a little bit of fun. But no, there isn't anything specific today in that sense. Just good vibes, because I haven't caught up with a community like this in quite a while. Rebel Pearl, thank you so much for the last one. Welcome in, you beautiful bean. Mm. A Sweden moment, what is your favorite country? Mm. Oh my god, that's difficult. Favorite country? A good question. I'm not sure if I really have a favorite country. Click suddenly decided to use hypnosis to create his own cultistic army. <laughs> I mean, evident really mind. Sounds, sounds wholesome. You're planning to do a stream for the Rainbow ESD release? Yes, Anne. Yes, yes. We are planning to do that. So uh, it seems to be turning out really well. I have shared a couple of the pictures, um, and I think it's going to be really fun. The Pride Demons and the Pride Mango. It's going to be really cool. It's going to be really cool. I think also... I don't think I have the contract and stuff on hand, but I believe a percentage of it is also donated to charity. I don't have all the numbers on hand, but I'll I'll look it up before I do the stream on it. <clears throat> it's really cool. I really love that Makeship is doing that kind of thing. <laughs> so I feel like <laughs> I feel like I've had so many projects <laughs> with plushies and stuff over the last few months. <laughs> uh, but it's really fun. All oh, this talk makes me want to re-download Discord. Discord is that kind of place where it's like it can be really fun. And really good and something i realized as a creator as well especially after like all the drama shit is that <laughs> like i swear to god that like 90 percent of my issues as a creator or like difficult people or drama or people that 
you know, try to expose you or something. All originates from Discord. All of it comes from fucking Discord. If I if I didn't have a Discord, life would be so much easier. But it would also be less fun because you also become much less you become more isolated, I think, from from like your community and, and stuff. So it's one of those things that is like, damn, it's so fun when it works and so nice to have, but oh my god, it brings in a, a certain demographic of people that uh, aren't perhaps particularly stable, which is which is wild. What program do you use for your D&D map? I use a program, it's online, it's called Incarnate, I think. Uh, and it's like, it's a subscription service, I think it costs like 20 bucks for a year. So it's pretty affordable, so I just got it for a year to just try it out, because I think my campaign is going to last for roughly a year or so. Um, but it works really well. It reminds me a lot of, like, uh, map-building programs in, like, Age of Empires and stuff, with a lot of pre-built assets and that kind of thing. So I really like it. I really like it. I can I could recommend it if you want to build maps. And it works on every level. Like, it has uh, one, uh, one menu or whatever you want to call it, one template for, you know, zoomed-out maps, and then has another template for parchment maps. It has another template for, like, zoomed-in maps, where you can build, like, battle maps or, like, inside houses and stuff. So, it is pretty flexible. I like it. I love that the chat on the stream is in Swedish. I can understand it, though, because I'm Norwegian. Where the chat on stream is Swedish, what do you mean? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Only fun things. Thank you so much for the 20. Your channel always makes me smile. Thank you. That's so sweet. Well, thank you so much for dropping by. I love watching, listening to your content while I work. If I remember correctly, you like walking in the woods. I have to suggest visiting the Minnesotan Boundary Waters. I'm gonna have to re-watch my VOD and just take notes of all, like, the recommendation of travel locations. This is, this is, this is great. <laughs> that girl, Lynn, thank you so much for being a lasso, you beautiful bean. Local Bard, thank you so much for the hundred Swedish crowns. You've inspired me to make my own homebrew dind campaign. It was inevitable with how much you mentioned silly dind ideas in your videos. I had to put them somewhere in their mouth. Oh, that's the most fun part. Like, figuring out mechanics and stuff. For me, the homebrew thing really started with the, that a lot of the group kind of, like, drops in, drops out because people are, you know, boring adults and they have better things to do than D&D, apparently. And not everyone is super up-to-date with, like, all the fine-tuned mechanics of D&D. Like, uh, character sheets, for example, it becomes tedious if you're gonna sit with, like, newcomers every time and make character sheets that takes hours to build. So, we just made a very simple system for stats, and, uh, there's more focus on, like, the dice rolls itself and, like, the role-playing part. So, you skip some of the technicalities. And then we have more of a makeshift balance system for spells. Like, spells are not so much taken from the original D&D books, but it's more just, you can just come up with something, and based on how powerful it is, it's like, as a dungeon master, you'll decide, like, oh, you're a, you're a ranger, for example, and you like to hunt. You have an ability that makes you uh, spot animals in the woods, for example, like a tracking spell. It's like, okay, this would be like a level one spell. Maybe you can use it, pff, say, two or three times between rests, you know, it, it's not particularly powerful, it's more like a utility. And then, for example, if you have like, oh, I can plant a, a fireball mine, for example. Okay, maybe that's like a level 3 spell, you can use it maybe twice between between long rests. <clears throat> so you like, uh, you tackle it in a bit more of a improvised manner, but you still use the original D&D framework to kind of rate spells and rate the power of things and how feasible it is to use it in certain ways. I found that to be a really fun way to do it, but uh, as the campaign has evolved, it's also gotten more complex, so I think I think by now we're basically back to, like, original complexity anyway, <laughs> but uh, it was it was a fun way to do it. Oh my god, what is... What is ah! uh, attempt number two. If you were a secret, mythical, supernatural character, would you be a summoner that turns chaotic wholesomeness into mana or summon creatures or perhaps something else? I would summon little demons. Hell yeah. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be my superpower. Only fun things, thank you so much for gifting five members, it's way too generous. Cyber DJ, thank you so much for the six. I, I found your channel almost five years ago. Oh my god. You know, I realized that uh, some time ago, that I've been doing YouTube now full time for almost five years. In November, end of November this year, it's gonna be five years since I handed in my papers at my old job. <laughs> That's like legit a long time. I started my channel in 2009, can you believe that? Holy shit. Uh, graduated from high school and entered college while watching your videos. You've aged like fine wine. That's actually really funny, because that's something I realized while making content, 
that it's been five years and I have certainly uh, grown up a lot and life has changed, but so has it for a lot of people in the audience. Just like you described, like you started watching me when you were like probably 18, 19. So now you must be like 24-ish, 23, 24. Um, and that's sort of something I kept in mind when I kept evolving my content. In the very beginning, I was making more like, uh, you know, meme stuff. I very much played up a character and it was like cursed memes or cursed comments and that kind of stuff. Uh, very much with the purpose of being like kind of edgy humor. Um, I, I don't think it was particularly offensive to most people because it was very clear. It was played up with the purpose of like, haha, look at this. It is cursed. That's the purpose. Um, but then as uh, time went on, I realized that, damn, my audience is going to grow too. So nowadays, if you watch my videos, it's like, you know, you talk about a lot of maybe themes that are more relatable for young adults or you talk about family stuff or life advice or education or work and uh, but make it kind of funny so the content has changed drastically so that's really fun i'm just really had, glad to hear as you stuck by the channel for so long that's super cool will the pride plushies be a bit smaller than the og ones varying sizes would be nice i think they're gonna be the same size for simplicity because that's like what makeship are used to doing Hey, Click, you recently said you got loads of plushies and no idea what to do with them. How about donating them to charity or community giveaway? I did have a thing. It was it was a convention that did, like, charity... What's it called? Like, charity auctions, kind of. And you can donate things for the auction. I was planning to send some stuff to it, but sadly, I think I sent them an email... But then I can't remember if they got back to me too late or if it got missed in spam. It was something like that. And I missed the deadline, so that kind of sucked. But I'll probably try it again in the future. So that is something I have considered doing with stuff, which is really cool. Um, but I haven't done it yet. Um, there, there, <laughs> the thing with being a creator that I've realized right now is that there's a lot of things I want to do. And uh, it sucks only having 16 hours in the day when you're awake. <laughs> <laughs> A Pride Frisco started our own D&D adventure, and we meet this coming weekend. I take my ESD. Hell yeah, that is amazing. Oh my god, it's so good. Uh, let's see. Okay, did I miss something? Did I, oh, wait, maybe I can... Oh, can I filter it? Oh, I can filter it, yes. We will be blessed with Click reacting to the D&D Reddit. Yes, indeed, Saint. Oh, yes, indeed. I made a video recently. I'll probably make more in the future. Fluffy, thank you so much for the three. Have you ever played Stardew Valley, Girl Lynn? A little bit. I have the game. I haven't really gotten into it, but I do appreciate the vibe it has. Mm -hmm. Click, can you say hi to my friend Ava? Hello, Ava. How are you doing today? You smell amazing. Mm. Yes, indeed. Sun Wolfy, thank you so much for being a lasso. Miss Looney, thank you for being a lasso. And Skippy, thank you for being a royal lasso. I'm just trying to keep up with things. It's really hard. <laughs> Everything is moving way too fast. <laughs> I'm adopting two new kittens this week. My kids named them Pumpkin and Mango. That is so sweet, Aussie Mom. Thank you so much for the five. Iceland where the volcano. Oh, that is cool. The gateway to hell. Yeah, John, that is another one of like travel locations that would be really cool. Iceland is a place I've been meaning to go in summer. Otherwise, it's going to be quite cold, I believe. Just joined in and notice you smell astonishingly good. Ooh, Mirak, thank you so very much. Uh, any advice on how to bring up a medical transitioning to a doctor? No idea if they're a transphobic or not, but my therapist said they can help me more. Honestly, I think... I mean, this is coming from someone who hasn't actually done it myself, but in my experience, doctors are, on average, pretty decent at dealing with whatever you bring up to them. I have brought up things with doctors in the past that aren't specifically in their field even, for example, just to like be like, hey, can you send me in like the right direction or whatever. So I would say you will never know before you bring it up, and if they turn out to be a butthole about it, you can, whoop, you can just switch doctors or talk to someone else about it. Um, so taking that first step, I think, is inevitable anyway. But I don't, I, haven't, I don't have experience with that specifically, but that's like my vibe in general. Bad doctors exist, but they are not that many in comparison. Most doctors are decent people. Also funny you should say that about creator issues. Newer viewer here, but just learned about what happened with Sad Milk. I'm not going to say much other than I'm sorry all you went through that hugs. And that was, that was a bit of a doozy, wasn't it? The funniest part is that it wasn't even that... It got much bigger during the drama. It was almost a year ago now, but during that thing. Like, when it happened, when I left the group, it wasn't that big. Of course it sucked, because you knew that, you know, the other side was kind of like... 
messing around and doing things they shouldn't be doing and being weird about it. So like there was this like ugh, this nagging feeling of looking over your shoulder for quite a long time. But it, it blew up so much more than I ever thought it would. It was kind of wild. I think some channels even made a whole career of like commenting on that drama alone. It was it was wild to see. Okay, let's see. Now I think I'm am I caught up? Almost. Oh, almost. Okay, well, let's go. <laughs> this is my first time I've managed to catch you live. I've got to say, I'm very excited to be here. Tatsu, welcome in, and thank you so much for the five. You beautiful bean. Bite my furry arse. <laughs> is that uh, Scottish? Uh, thank you so much for gifting five memberships, you beautiful bean. Uh, Mr. Fjordbach, thank you so much for the 50. I nail that one. Thank you so much for the 50. A beautiful Norwegian bean. I'll still call you a beautiful bean, even though... Norwegian. So anyway, uh, Rain, thank you so much for the 10. My daughter calls you Mango's daddy and wants you to know that she loves her little emotional support team. Her name is uh, Licorice. That is so sweet. That is amazing. Oh my god. Glow in the dark demon in my hands soon. Yes! I'm looking forward to getting it. I need to figure out some space in my studio because I want to be able to have some stuff here without everything overflowing all the time. <laughs> it's a bit like, uh, oh damn, having a home office isn't really adapted for having a lot of stuff. I'm working on the duckening fan art of your subreddit. Be sure to check out the progress. I will. Oh, yes, I will. You should make your way down under Australia. Yes, that's on my travel bucket list. I'll have to figure out how to make it work with work, I suppose. Thank you so much, MJ. Mwah. How do you explain to your transphobic parents that being trans is not a disease and you just can't stop it asking for a friend? And that is difficult. Sometimes people are really stuck in their ways. One thing... Uh, to bring maybe a bit of hope on it, uh, I suppose, is that I have seen people in the past who are, like, older and have a decent chunk of life experience that do actually change their mind when presented with uh, with good stuff, you know? Um, and that's, that's a turnaround I've seen in a lot of people. That stuff has been more normalized and there's more better awareness about it and stuff. So there is always hope, even though it's not uh, it's not nice to deal with. And uh, it is a pain. And I would say, when it comes to coming out and that kind of stuff, in general, you don't owe it to anyone. If you don't feel safe in your current environment, you're not entitled to do it for, for no reason. Like, if you don't feel safe in your school, if people are really eager to pick on people that are, you know, of, of a certain demographic or something like that, you don't owe it to them. You, you can wait with coming out that wildly, if you ever do, uh, until you feel like you're in an environment. Or the same thing with family. If you feel like your family aren't accepting of uh, what you are or who you are, you don't owe them coming out. And one advice I've seen repeated in the community is that wait until you're old enough to be stable. Because then it's also easier to have the discussion on equal footing, you know? If you're depending on someone who may not accept your choices and you're depending on them for housing or finances, that makes it way more difficult. It's a power imbalance. But if you're both adults and they just happen to be your parent, it's an easier discussion to have and there's not as much leverage. So, you know, then it's like, oh, well, if you, if you don't accept this kind of stuff, I'm just going to take a step back. And then they're like, oh, damn, maybe I need to reconsider. Um, <clears throat> it shouldn't have to be that way, but... Uh, that's sadly the reality we live in sometimes. So, uh, I suppose in that way it's it's difficult, and I'm not sure if, uh, if parents of that generation also spend a lot of time in circles where they would encounter those topics organically. Click your rock, my sister, I love your videos. Red, that's so sweet, thank you so much. Oh, wait, I missed something. Oh god, oh god, where did it go? Oh shit, okay, wait. Uh... How does one get to meet you? Like, do you ever meet and greet or something? A fellow Sven? Oh, that's really cool. I don't really do meet and greets, um, and uh, I mean the thing, the main reason for it honestly, which I suppose is quite transparent, is that I've had issues with stalkers and stuff in the past, so I usually never tell people where I'm going to be ahead of time. May maybe some people would consider that overly paranoid, but when you actually have experienced stuff, you, 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 you take a step away and make it less easy for people that might have nefarious purposes to track you down. With that said, every experience with me encountering people organically has always been very pleasant. Like, if you see me on the street or something, feel perfectly free to come up and say hi. Like, I've bumped into people uh, on airports, in the movies, I bumped into someone at a pub recently, and you know, it's always an amazing vibe, it's always been super fun. So, uh, so don't be, don't be afraid to come up if you, like, see me somewhere or bump into me, but... Uh, I haven't done any meet and greets yet, and that's like the main, the main reason why. 
Marcelino, thank you so much for being a last week. Beautiful bean. This one is all for you. Mwah. Me again, just wanted to say you smell exquisite. Jose, thank you so much for the two. You beautiful bean. Oh, Josie, I'm not sure. Depends on depends on the language, how you pronounce it, I suppose. Do you do voice acting? Not professionally, but I would like to try. <laughs> but I think, for me, like, voice acting, I think, falls into a similar category for me as with audiobooks. It's like I have enough knowledge with altering my voice and recording and audio processing and stuff where I can ask for payment for doing it, but I'm not that much of an expert that I can ask for enough payment f so I, don't, I could, like, replace other work I do with it. Does that make sense? It's like, you know, if a... Uh, <clears throat> If, if a runner was, a, a professional runner was asked to, like, go to a swimming contest, right? They're still gonna do pretty well, probably, because they're in good shape, but they're not specifically a swimmer. And that's sort of, like, the the difficulties I have with it, I think. It's like, sure, I'm decent at voiceovers, but I'm not specifically a voice actor. That's not what I'm honed in. So, if the opportunity presents itself, I'm often very willing to try. <clears throat> mm -mm 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 -mm. I had something on my screen that I was meaning to read, but it completely <laughs> it completely disappeared. The scrolling isn't great in this chat. <laughs> oh man. Uh we're visiting Michigan in summer. We have beautiful lakes. Ooh, that sounds really nice. Historic sites and lots of biking. Oh, that's my vibe. That's my vibe. I like that stuff. Hell yeah. Stalkers? That really sucks. Sorry to hear that. Uh, thank you for being you regardless and staying so encouraging. I mean, it's also that I don't think what I've experienced is the worst thing ever. I've seen some wild fucking stories of YouTubers and the stuff they deal with sometimes. But uh, it's still bad enough when you're like, eh, there are bad apples out there. I'm at least not going to make it easy for them, you know? <clears throat> One more travel recommendation closer to you. Serbia. I am Serbian and Belgrade has awesome nightlife. Ooh, that sounds interesting. I love exploring nightlife when you travel, and sometimes you get so surprised. I was at a... I was at, like, a small, just, corner pub when I was traveling through Switzerland a while ago, and uh, the waitress spoke, like, seven languages, which, like, Central Europe and stuff, but it was, it was wild. I think the only thing that I spoke that she couldn't speak was Swedish. <laughs> that was the only thing. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Will you ever sell more regular mangoes? Or maybe auctions off some of yours? I missed out the first time. Maybe. We'll see how it works with, like, the permanent plushies in general. If Makeship is willing to, like, expand on it, or if we're gonna keep it more like a niche thing for the demon specifically. But I wouldn't be surprised if it comes back. No. Taki Cosplay, thank you so much for being a last you beautiful bean. Mm. And make Wait, did I miss this one? Oh, God. Ah, stop scrolling. Oh, God. This is a bad system. Oh. oh, Tiger, thank you so much for the 20. I almost missed it. I just wanted to let you know I'm listening to you on a surround sound, and your voice is coming from every room in my house. It is so amazing. I hope you have a fabulous day. Would a live stream with one topic and Jamie be possible? I mean, I do live stream with... Have I live streamed with Jamie? I think maybe I've done some, like, group streams with Jamie. Maybe, like, some Among Us or something. Rings a bell, but I'm not sure if I have. Uh, with one topic, I've streamed a lot. So, definitely, yes. We just have to try to get the schedules to actually work. Time zones are a absolute rascal when you try to plan streaming. <laughs> it's like... Because they always start, like, in the day, which, of course, makes sense, comfortable for them. But it's often like that, for example, when I stream with Salty. And, um, and of course, he's, like, you know, on his schedule, in his time zone, which makes perfect sense. So when he starts streaming, it's already, like, 10 in the evening for me. And it's like, I can be here for an hour. <laughs> Wish me luck, got two trial days of work tomorrow and Friday at the job. I'm hoping to get, hoping to become more financially independent and start my transition this year. That's amazing. I wish you the best of luck. Dark Dragon Guard, is it 50? Oh, she dollars at the Bobby. I am a lad from down under, saved 5.5k odd to meet a girl I fell in love with from Sweden, only for her to turn around, cheat on me, and so now I hang out with my American sister, but bond not blood, and my two Swedish friends plus Helldivers too. Honestly, that sounds like a vibe with Helldivers, so it sounds like you're having an amazing time at least, but... Oh, my, that sucks! Jesus, why would... <laughs> I'm surprised someone would, you know, go through the trouble of getting to know someone long distance, even having them fly in just to be like, I don't know, sounds wild. I think you dodged, well, not even a bullet. I think you dodged a nuke. But it sounds like you're making the most of it. And who knows, maybe you'll meet someone on your journey that is uh, that is just way better. 
<laughs> There's always the positive vibe, you know? I wish you the best of luck. That must really suck to deal with. Like, the, the initial gut punch that comes with it. Never fun. Hey, click, love your videos, and you always make me feel better when I'm in a bad mood. Also, it's my birthday on Friday. Happy early birthday, Ace. I do hope you eat a bit too much cake. Christina, thank you so much for the seven pillin. Ooh, talking about Helldivers. I've been playing way too much Helldivers. Oh my god, it's so fun. It's so fun. When I realized you could shoot down drop ships with the, drop ships with the Quasar Cannon. Oh, that's the only thing I've been doing, baby. It's so good. It's so satisfying. Big explosion make monkey brain very happy. Target Cosplay, thank you so much for gifting 10 memberships. You're beautifully. Mwah. Hey, Click, love your videos. The past few months have been pretty crazy, a little rough, but your videos make me smile and laugh and able to take my mind off everything and keep it up. Aw, I do hope it gets better. Life really is a roller coaster sometimes, isn't it? Thank you so much for dropping by. I have over 88 hours on Helldivers. Do I have that much? I don't think so. Ah, I have, I have 56 hours. I'm falling behind. I'm falling. I need to play more Helldivers. Damn it. But it's so much fun. I managed to figure out how to how to solo run level 9, the Helldive difficulty. The trick is to use the light armor with a stealth bonus, and then you choose very carefully which battles to engage. It actually works. But don't try like a robot eradication mission on Helldiver 9. It's like... <laughs> Here are 15 hulks, all at the same time, trying to snuggle up inside of your butt and say, oh great, <laughs> that's good. All the flamethrowers are broken right now. Oh my god, and not the weapon the hell divers use, like the enemy's flamethrower. They're like, you know, if they like pfft, squirt a little flame in your general direction 50 meters away, and you have like a flame graphic go by you 5 meters to the side, you just instantly die. Blech! It's so, it's so wild, man. It's so wild. Fire resistance and armor would be great. School entrance test and didn't get in, but I have the tiny... <laughs> emo support team, but that's that's just wild though. Uh, with me, and it made me feel better, and now this is helping too. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, stuff like that happens sometimes. The good, the, the positive aspect, I can tell you from experience with school and uh, acceptance and grades and shit, is that it feels really big in the moment, which of course it does for a good reason. It's like the next step and this thing you want to do, and it's difficult to get there. You have plenty of time as well. For example, what I did back in the day, I was like 19 or something, I didn't have particularly good grades in high school. They were pretty mediocre. So I didn't get into any of the programs I wanted, and I don't think I was at a maturity level where I would, do, would have done particularly good either. Uh, I took a year off, and I worked instead, saved up money. So I had a bit of a saved up capital by the time I actually did get into uni. And during that year, I also studied evening courses in math. And uh, I also studied for a thing in Sweden that directly translates to the high school test, but Hög School approved it. It's like a higher education test that you can take. I, maybe the American equivalent is the SATs. I'm not entirely sure if that translates, but uh, it's basically a test for like general knowledge that you can use as a separate set of grades. And I did pretty good on this test, and I got into a program I wanted, which was an engineering program. And uh, so that was like one year gap, studied, you know, studied, did my tests, etc., etc., matured a bit, saved some money. And then even, uh, even during uni, I remember, I had a lot of pressure on myself, like, oh, I want to finish on time, I want to finish on five years exactly. And then, you know, I had a couple leftover exams, did my thesis, I finished in five and a half years, roughly, which is perfectly within normal parameters, you know. So I think that once you're there, you very easily build it up as a really big thing for yourself, but in retrospect, plus minus one year doesn't matter. I was still on the like the younger side when I was a student. You know, most people had taken one gap year, maybe even two. So uh, <clears throat> it's uh, it's a very normal thing to do, and saving some money is good. And it also can make you very motivated to go back to school because if you work one year on something else, maybe not the thing you want to, and it's like great, I saved money, but this is not something I want to do forever. And then you get the motivation to study harder once you get back to school. So that's actually a pretty pretty decent thing. <clears throat> what engineering program did you do? Um, yeah, how does it even how does it even translate? It's like mechanical engineering, and then I have a master specialization in industrial management and statistical math. Um, so it's a real uh, lot of words, and they sound very fancy, which is good. Although, to be fair, I don't use it much nowadays, apart from debunking stupid stuff in confidently correct videos. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> 
How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm very happy to be back on my like workout routine. I'm trying to take 220 in bench press. I have done so in the past, but a few years ago. Uh, so I want to get back to that level. So I'm like in a bit of a contest with a friend and see who gets it first. Uh, but I did fall behind a bit because I got I got that stupid cold for like a week and a half. So now I've like dropped probably a couple of kilos on, on my weights that I use for just pumping. So uh, that's, that's a shame. So I'm trying to catch up to that again. But it's going good. I feel good. Damn, Kalik! Yes, indeed. Oh, damn. 220 kilograms. No, no, 220 pounds. God, not 220 kilo. Do I, do I look that big? <laughs> Jesus Christ, that would look like the fucking rock. <laughs> no, 100 kilograms, 220 pounds. <laughs> I think that's more reasonable for, like, my relatively normal stature, you know? <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Long str long time no stream. Happy to see you live. Thank you. Well, welcome, you beautiful queen. Thank you so much for the 15 months. Mwah. Mm. Will you other different content than Reddit? I have done some second channel stuff and also stream and play video games and stuff. It's just that Reddit was the most popular for some reason. And I, I also find it quite fun. Honestly, it's pretty fun to just like fun, find cool, trendy shit online and rant about it. It's pretty, it's pretty fun. Chimnum, thank you so much for gifting a sub. You beautiful bean. Mwah. Click, you smell absolutely beautiful today. You do too. You smell absolutely beautiful today. 220 pounds is still gargantuan. I know because I am 220 pounds. <laughs> I mean, 220 pounds, yeah. I'm trying to put on a bit of weight. I think it's partially because I was always very skinny when I grew up. And now I'm almost 80 kilos, which was like a smaller goal of mine. It's the heaviest I've ever been. Um, so that's pretty cool. So I guess like benching uh, 100 kilos when you weigh a little below 80 is, is a pretty decent ratio. Um, but yeah, that was always something I struggled with growing up. I, I think you get like that slight, I'm not sure if I want to call it body dysmorphia per se. I think it's a bit too strong of a word for this case. But I think you get this slightly skewed perspective of your own physical body depending on what you felt like growing up, right? So for me, for example, I was always a late bloomer. I was uh, pretty small and skinny until I hit puberty, and then I grew pretty tall, and then I was tall and skinny. <laughs> so, and I think as, as a guy especially, that was, I wouldn't call it the most difficult thing ever, but, you know, being small and skinny as a dude in your teens is like, ah, ah, you just, you just feel, I don't know, it's not, it's not a good vibe. It's a very normal thing uh, as, a, as a teenager, but it doesn't feel good. <clears throat> so I think after that point, I always see myself as smaller than I am, like in comparison to others. Like if I'm standing in front of someone, looking them like eye to eye, for example, I always underestimate how big I am. And I had this realization a couple of years ago, because I was standing on a bus, and I was like, eh, I'm about average size in this bus. And then I saw myself in one of these mirrors, the drivers used to like see if anyone is on the doors and that kind of thing. And I realized that, oh, fuck, I'm, I'm one head taller than everyone else, and my shoulders are, like, sticking out, uh, like, up behind the, the, the behind the person I'm standing behind. It's, <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, so I think, like, based on who who you were growing up, you very easily, like, round yourself in, in a weird direction. 80 kilos is actually 176 pounds. Yeah, it's not, it's like average adult male weight, sort of, depending a bit on country and that sort of thing, but uh, it's not bad. Getting there. Love your aliens posting to social media theory. Have you considered creating a cute alien plushie? Oh, that'd be sweet. That'd be sweet. And with an emotional support alien <laughs> felony cat. Thank you so much for being a noble lassie. So beautiful bean. Mwah. Hello, colleague. Just wanted to pop in and say your videos make me happy. Drac, you beautiful bean. Thank you so much for the five. I do hope you have an amazing day. Mm. Yes, indeed. Various Swedish people so tall. I'm not sure what the true average height is. I don't know. Uh, yeah, what's the Swedish average height? Uh, Swedish. I mean, of course, it depends a bit on gender, but Swedish men are average 5'11. So that's 180 meter, 1.8 meters, 187 centimeters, which sounds about right. You're my comfort creator. Oh, that's so sweet. Welcome in. 
I'm 54 kilos at 5'1", and I'm really insecure about it, and many people have called me fat, and I am done as... Oh, as... Okay, because of it, but I luckily recovered from it, but I'm still insecure. It's really difficult to deal with, honestly. Um, like, when you start criticizing yourself too hard, you start looking at things that aren't really there, and I think we've all gone through those kind of things with various details. One thing I realized as you grow older, you start caring less, <laughs> which is which is kind of nice, honestly. I cared way more about stupid, small, petty things that I don't think anyone else saw when I was 20 compared to now when I'm 30. Um, but it's something difficult to deal with. Something that helped for me was doing something about it. And that can be more more or less difficult, depending on who you are. Like, maybe it's a medical issue that plays into it, or maybe dealing with some parallel, you know, depression or something that very much plays into, you know, your physical health as well. For me, I felt much better about it when I kind of took control. Um, so when I started, like, working out and putting on a bit of weight purposefully, I was like, damn, I kind of have control over this. This is, this is no longer something that has a hold over me. It's the other way around. Which was, uh, that was a very liberating feeling. So I think taking small steps to, like, show yourself mentally that you are the one in control can really help with that stuff. Wish me luck. I applied for an internship. That's very hard to get in. Please use the power of Sweden to bless my chances. Jelly belly fish, you have the blessing of the Sved. Megad. Do an emotional sport team an alien as a collab with Salty. That would be really cute, wouldn't it? That would be really cute. Thank you so much for the 5 SJ hockey. You beautiful bean. Mwah. <clears throat> collab with Salty for emotional support. Team. <laughs> Great minds think alike, don't they? Oh, yes. You're 30? I thought you were like 24, 25. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Maybe it's the light. It reduces the shading from all my wrinkles. <laughs> no, but I th one thing I've noticed is that we probably... He's 30? I don't believe it is 24. Oh my god, I should do this more often. I should just randomly reveal my age and my content so I can feel really good about it. Although, to be fair, when I went to the liquor store... Uh, in Sweden, the limit for liquor store is 20 years old. And they check your ID for quite a long time. Just to make sure you're not just, you know, a 19-year-old that managed to grow a beard, you know. Um... But when I went to the liquor store a couple of days ago, they didn't actually check my ID. Oh my god. So finally, I look like I am definitely older than 19. <laughs> Whoops. <sighs> oh my god. Ah, but that's good. That's good. Hell yeah. That means that when I'm 40, I'm gonna look 30. So that's perfect. Hell yeah. <laughs> 30 is still young. I mean, to be honest, so far at least, I haven't experienced anything I... I'm bothered by when it comes to aging. Um, you know, one thing I realized when I hit 30 is that I put on weight easier. But but I kind of like it because it also means I put on weight easier when I'm bulking and working out. When I was in my 20s, I was like hopelessly... I wouldn't call it hopelessly skinny, but it's like you would work out so much and you would get stronger and you would put on like one kilogram. And that's it. Now it's like... If I bulk and like work out good for six months, I I put on five kilos. You know, it's kind of it's kind of cool. So in that way, I haven't experienced anything I don't like about the age I've reached so far. I think probably for me, I would. I don't know. I don't know when it would actually bother me. Maybe if my hair falls out. <clears throat> Oftentimes, I listen to click in the background on my everyday life. Your voice is really comfortable, Phoenix. Thank you so much for the six. You beautiful being. Mwah. Or maybe if my hair falls out, I just shave it off and just grow back a mustache. That's probably something I can rock. Hell yeah. My sis said you look 23, 24. Aw, hell yeah. I wonder if the camera makes me look younger, honestly, because people usually don't think I'm 23 IRL. <laughs> Ender Emma, thank you so much for being a lasso. You're beautiful, being. This one is all for you. Mwah. Mm. One did they say you make me happy every day? So sweet. Aw. Not so fun fact. You're 50% done with your life at the age of 18 based on life perception. Oh yeah, how time, uh, how fast time goes. One thing I've realized though is that I think you can actually affect it. Because uh, one thing I realized is that the more different things you do and the more you learn, the slower time goes. For me, for example, when time goes the fastest is when I'm just sitting and working and every day looks very similar. Then it's like the weeks just, they just go away. Time goes way too fast. But when I'm doing new things, that might be a bit demanding, but also new things, time goes really slow. I have realized I can still make time go slow if I make an effort. So for example, 
last summer I was down visiting a couple of friends in France and it was a bit of a road trip to get there. Once we were there, there were like a lot of events in the day. We were like meeting a lot of new people, discovering new places, uh, going on little hikes, exploring restaurants. I ate snails for the first time. That was interesting. It wasn't so bad as I thought it was going to be. And uh, we were there for like three days. It felt like two weeks because we did so much every single day. Like, you know, woke up, had one activity, another activity, went back to the place we stayed for a bit, then went out, did three more activities in the in the afternoon, have a little evening a drink or something, went go back home, and then the next day the same thing. So every day felt like two days crammed into one. Um, and that period, time went really slow. And in like a nice way, like after a couple of days, you were, well, we've done so much. Holy shit, we've only been here for two days. Damn. But like I said, it takes a bit of effort. So you can slow down time, even when you start getting a bit older. It just takes effort, which sometimes can be difficult because you're busy with work and life. Uh, Chair, thank you so much for gifting a membership. You're beautiful being this one is offering. Mwah. And she is a wizard. Thank you so much for gifting five membership. And Taki, thank you so much for the 65. Swedish fan, I'd like to know if you ever consider doing a fan meetup. Like Narcon or some things. Lots of love from Emio. That's very nice. Um, I don't really do meetups specifically, but uh, sometimes I go to nerdy places if I feel like it. So no promises, I suppose. But thank you. That's really sweet. I have a really hard time making friends. Any magical Swedish tips on how to talk to people? Oh shit, that is making friends in your 30s, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say, <clears throat> do I even have any good tips on how to make friends? I mean, most of the friends I have, I met in like uni and stuff, honestly. Um, most people meet most of the people they know in places they go to often, I've realized. So it's like where you study, where you work. Um, I think a good way if you just want to meet people that you can hang out with is, for example, join a running crew, maybe. Or join a language course or go to a language cafe or stuff like that. Stuff that is regular. I know a couple of friends that made really good buddies, for example, because they joined a running crew. So I think finding activities that are semi-regular with like-minded people is the best way to make friends when you are an adult. Like outside of school or outside of the office. <laughs> hmm, yeah. Or places you hang out, like, I go to a local comic book store, and then you'll blink and be in a D&D session. Yeah, there you go! That's amazing! That's how you do it. Hell yeah. Hollywood, thank you so much for being a member for 12 months. My glow in the commercial portion is finally shipped! I am informed- Hell yeah. Oh, that's so good. That is so good. I'm so looking forward to seeing the pictures of people getting them. I'm finally two months on testosterone. Oh, hell yeah. I have no idea how to read that name. But thank you so much for the two, and the best of luck. That's amazing. <clears throat> Me and my siblings want to get into D&D so bad, but we live in the quintessential r slash insane parents family. So we are isolated and have no friends beside the three of us and are autistic. So, I mean, if you want to, make an adventure just the three of you. That could be, that could be pretty fun. Um, I would say the optimal minimum group size is probably four, but you can still do it on three. <clears throat> that could be pretty fun. And you don't have to do it super complex. Like, make a make a homebrew. Print a couple of maps or something from that you find online. You know, you can make it very fun with very few things. I think that's how I made my first couple of D&D adventures I hosted. I just printed a couple of, like, uh, stock photos of cartoon islands, you know, <laughs> that I found on Google. And then I took a couple of chess pieces to mark the player characters, and that was it. That was, that was my whole fancy setup. <laughs> <laughs> it's so awesome to catch you live. You've been part of my routine for four-ish years and my favorite voice to listen to when I'm done at work. Much love to you. Cat soups, that's amazing. Thank you so much for the 10 and the support, you beautiful bean. Sending greetings from Mexico. Just wanted to say your videos really help me improve mood every day. Oh my god. People are way too sweet, man. Oh my god. Uh, Jennifer, thank you so much for being a lasso. My ducks are outside. They trying to get in. Let in the ducks. Let the ducks in. Oh my god. Do they have beds inside? I hope they have beds inside. <clears throat> <laughs> I discovered your channel last year, along with OT and Jane. You want to help me figure out that I'm trans and go by she slash her pronouns now. Thank you. Ender Emma, that sounds amazing. Have you watched Three Body Problem? Yeah, I have. It's a really cool new show. Yeah, I, I also kind of binged it. I watched the whole season in like three days. <laughs> 
It's really nice. I like it because it's not particularly clear what it is about in the beginning. And what I like about it is as a nerd who studied certain things and stuff is that they actually reference stuff that is real. You know, I don't want to spoil too much of the show, but part of a character is that they're like at an observatory where they're, you know, listening into space, uh, you know, for, for signals and stuff. And uh, at one point they, for example, talk about the Fermi paradox, which is like, if uh, the universe has been around for so long and there are so many potential planets that could be Earth-like, why haven't we heard anything? Like, where are all the aliens? You know, the, uh, the perceived likelihood of the amount of alien civilization that should be out there doesn't add up with, like, how quiet it is. Um, so the, there are a bunch of like things like that. So that's what I liked about the series. It actually references real things. And then, for example, there's like a simulated reality kind of thing without spoiling too much. And one of the dudes there is like very much a gamer boy. So so he's like, oh my god, I can mess with the NPC. So like the girl is not used to video games. She's like, oh, are you real or something? And the dude is like, no, 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 it's just NPCs. And he slaps the dude. He's like, oh. Anyway, proceeds with dialogue, so it's really funny. So it has a lot of references to stuff that is like, damn, I relate to this, both because I'm a nerd and because I play games, hell yeah. <laughs> so I really like it. <clears throat> you can purchase stuffed animal nets to hang in the corners for all your plushies. Ooh, that sounds that sounds pretty good, actually. It sounds like a good idea. Want to get too dusty, though? I might try that. I might try that. Sounds like a decent idea. Hell yeah. I'm getting so many good tips from chat today. Hell yeah. Uh, oh, no, I missed that. Oh, there was something about... Uh, oh, where did it go? God damn... Oh, no. Ooh, there we go. On the topic of cat name, they could use Lore Farquad instead of Farquad from... Tri oh, like Quad. Oh, that's so good. Kenneth, that's a good idea. I like that. Meow, meow, click. Meow, meow to your two little po. Oh, my God, yes. MK Squid, thank you so much for being a member for nine months. Really, Mr. Streams, welcome back, you beautiful bean. I do hope you enjoy your stay. A beautiful bean. Me and my dog, we Jeff, cuddle up in bed and watch your videos. Your voice is so soothing. Much love from us both. That is so sweet. That is an amazing mental picture. Hell yeah. Did you ever watch Thomas the Tank Engine as a child? I did. But I think it was dubbed in Swedish. I remember this one episode where there's, like, the grumpy train, and he gets, like, boxed into a garage because everyone is like, nah, you're grumpy, so we're just gonna bury you alive. <laughs> And then he just sits there, and you see the seasons pass by outside. It's so dark. <laughs> I remember that one. Click probably knows Haspen Hotel, like maybe heard it. Oh, I've been tagged in so many posts about Haspen Hotel. I haven't actually watched it, but... <clears throat> I've heard it many times. Oh, so many times. I think the thing is that as soon as there is something online or in media, that people are like, ooh, this could be vaguely related to Click. Like, this isn't the bad thing, it's just a funny observation. Then I get, my, my mentions get so spammed. I had the same thing when uh, when Jeff the Land Shark was going viral and was being memed. It's like, you know, <laughs> I, I still remember when, when there was this, like, snippet of a Jeff comic <laughs> that was posted 17 times in a row on the subreddit. It's like, if you're sorted by no, it's like, has Click seen this? Have you seen Jeff the Land? It's like 70 posts. This, this same clip from the same comic is bam, 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 bam. <laughs> that, was, that was a sight to be seen. My god. Minecraft stream soon. Ooh, yeah, I need to figure out, like, what nice sandbox games I should play next. How do I get into D&D? <clears throat> they don't know anything about it, but it seems fun. I mean, if you don't know anything, I would say the best way is to tag along on another adventure. That's what I did, at least, when I learned it. Uh, Kendra, thank you so much for the five. You beautiful bean. I had a really bad day today, so this stream is really refreshing. Thank you, chair. Thank you so much. Welcome in. I do hope, I do hope you feel gooder. Hell yeah, click watch my favorite show. Also, the episode was Sad Story of Henry. Sad story. I don't remember the names of the episodes. I usually don't pay attention, to be honest. <sighs> mm. Duke wasn't just grumpy, he was old. That's why he was put in the shed and forgotten. That's even darker. <laughs> that's, that's so bad. He's not even like a train that got grounded for an unreasonable period of time. Now he's just like, you can just sit in this... Sit alive in this grave until you die. That's... Wow. Holy shit. Violet Strike, thank you so much for gifting 10 memberships. You beautiful being this one is all for you. Mwah. Like old timey children's stories really had some uh, some wild things in them, didn't they? Have you heard of. 
you like it? I have no idea, though. I don't even know if I can pronounce it, but no, I haven't. I haven't. Thank you for the two. I'm gonna take a look. Definitely find someone who is willing to let you watch. Or Dimension 20? Brennan Lee Mulligan is an amazing DM. Oh, it's a response to the other one asking about, about dungeon mastering. I think you can find D&D uh, &D events probably in your area if you search for it. I know some people host like larger D&D events. I know, for example, uh, one thing that happens in certain places is that you have... Oh dear. Like you have a larger adventure. So you have like a stage with like a... Uh, over dungeon master so to say that's like hosting the whole thing and then you have a bunch of individual tables where you have like dungeon masters leading their own squad and it's all the big same adventure but every group does it differently uh that's pretty interesting so maybe you can find something like that if you want to get started with it lv thank you so much for being a noble last for your beautiful evening this one is offering Mwah. watch watching your video and i think having a click academy would be fun Oh, I love doing a Click Academy. It's so good. It's so good. And I always get to rant about, like, the stupidest stuff. It's amazing. <laughs> hey, Click, would you stream a one-shot? I have thought about doing something with D&D on streams in the past, but I'm not sure if I have a setup for it. And I'm not sure if I know enough people that will be, like, in the same time zone to sit down for, like, a proper session. Um, and, like, the people I play with IRL aren't, like, creators or anything, so they're not really used to being on camera and that kind of stuff. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's one of those things that I would like to do, but uh, I'm not sure if I have, uh, like, the squad vicinity to do so properly. Violet Strike, thank you so much for being a lasso. Mwah. I want a shark plushie to call mine. Everyone wants a shark plushie to call theirs. Have you watched Young Royals? No, I haven't. I haven't. Also learning Swedish? Hell yeah. How goes the Cerberus Duck? Ooh, I'll probably post a teaser about it, maybe later today. Yeah, I have I have some, some progress stuff. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. I like how it's turning out now. More collab videos, question mark? Yeah, that would be fun, wouldn't it? I haven't done a collab in a bit because I was traveling and then I was sick. <laughs> it really messes up your schedule when, when like you get a cold and a stuffy nose and your work depends on your voice. <laughs> Everything just stops. <laughs> Will it ever be a Traumatized and Back bingo? Would love to see that. I recorded the Traumatized and Back today, actually, but not a bingo. I'm not sure if there's enough... Maybe I can make a bingo. I'm not sure if, like, a full 5x5 bingo would be possible, but maybe something like, you know, ca typical Karen could be one box. Old dude could be another one. Uh, creepy dude could be another one. Workplace harassment could be another one. HR disaster. Um, get back at bully. Yeah, I think I think I think a bingo card could be possible. Um, so maybe the next one I'll do is a bingo. Actually, that could be fun. How did you come up with the lasso thing? Honestly, I just said lotties and lasses, and then I made lassos as a pun because it was a combination of lotties and lassos, and then. Or ladies and lasses, and then I had a bunch of people be like, "Oh my god, it's like gender neutral for ladies and lasses," and that's how it was born. It was quite, it was quite like natural. It was pretty cool. I love friends, but I don't like talking to strangers. I usually don't participate in live slash streams, but this feels nice because you actually react, reply to people. Thank you, Valkyrie. That's really sweet, and yeah, understandable. Yeah, I mean, most people don't like approaching strangers, honestly. On, I, I think that's. This is, this is like a bit of a wild side tangent, but I think that's also why a lot of people have very negative impressions of, for example, uh, party contexts. You always experience that, you know, as soon as they go to this kind of context, like there's always people that are so pushy and everything. And I think that it's because most people don't approach strangers, but like the 5% of people that do, do it to everyone. You know, I had this realization when we were hosting a party a bunch of years ago, like a big party. And was like friends and friends of friends and stuff. A very like good environment, very safe, and you know, we knew everyone, or at least someone there knew the people that were coming, you know. And during this party, we realized that, wait a second, like th there's a group of girls that came to us and be like, Yeah, we were uncomfortable because because like touchy stuff. And it's like, what the hell? This never happens here. So we we of course went on like the investigation hunt. Turns out it was all the same fucking dude. It was one drunken asshole that was, like, do, doing and being touchy and too forward with, like, everyone. So we, we, of course, kicked him to the curb because, because F that dude. But 
it made me realize that because I had the same experience when I was uh, hosting some pubs and stuff at my uni that it was always the same people who were the troublemakers. It was always like that that that, that small percentage that just like just don't know what boundaries are. It's wild. So may, that's like my hypothesis. You know, most people don't like interacting with strangers, and the ones that do are like very often completely unbearable. <laughs> Kendra, thank you so much for the two. Do you ever regret leaving a typical job world? Not yet. No. I would say... I mean, there was this big drama, right? On on, uh, on Twitch and Twitter and stuff about... Was it Hassan that was saying something about that streaming was very difficult? And then it was sort of clipped out of context as well. But uh, And then other people being like, it's so easy. And then uh, it, it was a big debate. And I think uh, my conclusion with the whole thing, I never spoke about it publicly, but... I just felt like everyone missed the point um, from from all sides. So I've never regretted it because I think I can also go back to it if I wanted to. But it's just very different. It's very different. And I think that's what people miss. Like, when I've had a bunch of different jobs by now. I remember one of my first jobs. I was working just in a, uh, in a small electronics store. I was 15. And... Uh, the first job I had when I graduated high school, I was, like, cleaning taxi cars. I, w I woke up at 5 in the morning, went out into the middle of nowhere where they had a taxi garage, and I would just clean taxis and fix, like, you know, the price stickers that are on taxi cars. Um, then I worked as, like, an IT consultant in a larger company, which was a glorified name for just, like, doing the stuff that no one else wants to do. <laughs> Pay was good considering I was like 19 and didn't have any expenses in life basically but but compared to like any other job the pay was pretty crap um, then I studied I worked as a private tutor for a while I worked as a tutor at the university for a bit um, worked as a consultant and now I do YouTube and run a small company so every single one of these jobs has a very distinct pros and cons and in my experience the things you have to deal with also vary depending on the level the job is at, if that makes sense. Like, take my job I had with the taxi cars, for example. It was not particularly glorious. It was kind of dirty. I had to wake up early. It was uncomfortable hours. I don't think I've ever, I was ever stressed about it. You know? And that was also because I was young, and the, the financial pressure wasn't really there at the time. Uh, but uh, I was never stressed about the job itself. With YouTube, uh, one thing I realized is that I have never been sleepless over any other job than the stuff I do on YouTube. Because when shit hits the fan, when you do something like this, it really fucking hits the fan. Um, but on the other hand, the benefits are also way more than any other job I had. Like, it's in terms of, like, you know, compensation or what I can do with it or the freedom that comes with it or I can actually choose who I want to work with. YouTube blows anything else I've done out of the water. So I, th I think it just depends so much, honestly. And, and of course, the point is that I wouldn't do this if I didn't choose to. You know, uh, it is an active choice to keep doing a job like this. So I think those kind of like discussions are, they miss a lot of nuance a lot of the time. Um, but with that said, being able to do YouTube as a job is incredibly privileged. Doesn't mean it's not stressful, but it is a privileged job and one you do because you choose to, right? So, eh, I think, that, I think there's multiple takes on multiple sides regarding that, but I don't regret leaving a normal job, at least not yet. <laughs> <clears throat> Sassy, thank you so much for the membership for six months, you beautiful bean. Really want the pride emotional support team to look so cool. Love from Florida, thank you so much for the 50 violet strike, you beautiful bean. I am so looking forward to it as well. Oh my god, it's so colorful and good. I've already had people at parties and stuff that are like, I want one when they come. When are they coming? <laughs> it's so good. Probably won't see this, but I did. I love your videos so much. Help me get through my life. It's crazy right now. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for dropping in, Fantastic Fox. I do hope you feel it feels easier soon. Oogly87, thank you so much for being a royal lasso, you beautiful me. Oh, I just scrolled away way too far. Whoopsie daisy. All right, there we go. Hell yeah. Do you have recommendations for what I should build in my Minecraft survival? I'm not good of a builder. Ooh. I like building, like, towers and stuff. Or cottages. I'm very cottage core when it comes to Minecraft. Dawn Bean, thank you so much for being a lasso. Uh, can you wish me luck? I applied for the Erasmus program to Sweden. Haven't gotten accepted yet. Good luck, Rhea. I hope you get there. This is from my first scholarship money. That is so cool. That is so cool. 
I went to this restaurant where the waiters are rude uh, to you and dance and stuff, and I thought of you, and you could work there if YouTube for some reason <laughs> doesn't work out. I could be a sassy waiter. Yeah, I saw something like that. It was like a restaurant that was specialized into treating people like crap. I don't... <laughs> It sounds so wild, it's so funny. Like a proper Karen restaurant, like on purpose. <laughs> I love drawing while listening to you talk. Thanks for being ever-present, supportive voice behind many of my art since 2019. Much love, click. Oh, thank you so much, that's so sweet. Let's see, did I miss anything? Furry Kitten Angel, thank you for the five. Your games always sound interesting. I'd love to play D&D with you. Keep up the good work, dude, and hello from the UK. Hello, I do have an amazing day. Mm. Recently started playing D&D. Me and my friends made our characters separately. Two of us ended up being cannibals and all of us are traumatized. Yeah, sounds, sounds about right. Yep, yep. All your plush is gonna take over my home. They've already taken over mine, so... Yeah, sounds... Uh, <laughs> sounds like a pretty... A pretty, a pretty reasonable... Uh, a reasonable progression. I love how thoughtful you are, Click. So many people online go for quick, good slash bad takes, and it's important to keep in mind that most things in life are really nuanced. Most things are really nuanced. And one thing... Like, if you take the job argument, for example, it's that it's not only nuanced because of the work itself, it's also nuanced because it's heavily depending on the person, right? As an example, I did relatively well as a consultant because I'm quite extroverted. I don't get that exhausted by interacting with people. I had a good friend of mine who is really smart, uh, did a very similar education to me, and he got really stressed out by it because uh, he's more introverted, really smart, but that part of it stressed him out. I think also the work gave him way too much, way too much like responsibility too fast, and that was not really great on their part. But that's like one aspect. Like different things are stressful to different people, um, and this is something I realized with YouTube as well. I think it's it's a bit ironic, but one thing I've thought about with YouTube. This is more of like a hypothesis and like a kind of like a. I don't even know what to call it, like a like a brain gymnastics hypothesis or something. But one thing you feel after a while on YouTube is that, wow, why are there so many people that are weird or creepy or scummy or uh, ruthless or whatever you want to call it? Hardly everyone, but like, why does it seem that it's overrepresented? And I'm starting to wonder if it is simply because people that care too much simply get burned out because it, it's really stressful sometimes like that feeling M a lot of it is in your head a lot of it really is in your head but for example waking up and realizing you have a tweet with 20,000 likes saying you're bad for xyz and it's going trending and you're like oh yeah this is my morning that's fun that can be really overwhelming 20,000 people like this thing that agrees with that you're a piece of shit holy fuck how does a human brain even process that Sheesh. So, uh, in that sense, I wonder if, like, there is a survival bias with creators that, you know, if you're really, really bad, you will probably get cancelled at some point. If you're too good or too... I'm not sure if soft is the right word, but I think you know what I mean, like, uh, in that way. You know, you want everyone to like you, kind of, and you want everyone to get along. I think it's gonna burn you out. So, I think most people that survive as a creator are the people that manage to care enough but not too much and it sounds so fucking bad when you say it out loud but that's something i've realized too like i used to be really bothered when not everyone like agreed with something i said even if it's a few people nowadays i think my skin grew much thicker and i realized that i stopped caring as much about smaller stuff that is a bit silly right and most of the time it's incredibly performative anyway it's like if you, if you scroll twitter for more than five minutes you'll be like yeah, wow, people love to complain, but they never actually do anything themselves to make the world better. <laughs> Isn't that good? Like, I saw Moist Critical, for example, almost getting cancelled the other day, because there is a conspiracy that he's only charitable because it's a tax write-off. And, like, uh, first off, it's not that it's not the case. It doesn't work like that. And the second part is that even if it was a write-off, he would still give away more money than he saves from it being a write-off, right? Like, the math doesn't map. But people on Twitter don't know that. So all of a sudden, you have people running around cancelling people who literally, like, give away money to people that need it. And it's like, what the f- Is this- Oh my god! So, uh, that was kind of sad to see, honestly. 
Violet, thank you so much for gifting 20 members. You're absolutely beautiful. Mina's way too generous. Thank you so much. Oldie timey children's stories are amazing. I had a book about a boy who was a menace, but then fell into a grinder and was fed to ducks. Was it a German story, perchance? I've heard those are wild. I play Minecraft with you on in the background. Juke, jukebox, that is amazing. Thank you so much. Lillian, thank you so much for being a lasso. You're beautiful, Bean. Mm. Absolutely glorious. Ah, you are cute. Mm. Well, thank you. You're gonna make me blush. I don't know what this stream is about, because I just joined, and I have to get back to work, but here's 20 bucks. Val, you're so beautiful. Thank you so much, and I hope work goes well. We're just we're just shooting the poo. I love hearing about your D&D world, and I also listen when you draw, so thanks for all the inspo and good vibes. Well, thank you so much, you beautiful bean, and thank you for the five. Love the stories and advice you give. First time watching you... Oh. Well, that... Oh, wait, let's see. Wasn't anything... Eh. Why did... Oh, God, that is so bad. It feels like you're gonna be connected with you in the chat. Thank you so much of you all. I'm not sure if that maybe Oh, I think I think the wrong message got removed by the moderator. I think they meant to remove something that was a different language, but <laughs> it was accidentally that one. Whoops! <laughs> ah, it happens, don't worry about it. Uh but thank you so much. Really sweet message. First shop ever, love click Oogly, thank you so much for the two. And Emily, thank you for being a lasso. No clue why it was removed. Uh, I think they aimed for the message next to it, but the chat was moving too fast. That <laughs> happens sometimes. <clears throat> Can I have the luck of the Swede on getting into an advanced course in uni? You have the luck of the Swede. I'll do like a Swedish pat or something. There we go. <laughs> a little update on the Click XT bad fanfic I've been writing forever. It's now gone to my editor friends. So hopefully in about a week or so I should get it back. So hopefully in about three weeks. That sounds amazing. Oh my god, I'm looking forward to cringing. Oh my god, I haven't had a really good cringe in a while. Ooh, my spine is tingling already. I calligraphy? Nail that one. Thank you so much for gifting a membership, you beautiful bean. Mwah. We'd love to see what the stats would be for an ESD or Mango in D&D. Ooh. I think, like, the ESD would be really high in some stats, but not really high in combat, you know? You may be tired of hearing this. You're an amazing YouTuber. Oh, I never get tired of hearing you. <laughs> and your videos have brought joy in my bad days. Thanks and greetings from Mexico. That's so sweet. Thank you so much, Samuel. You beautiful bean. Hello there. Chow, thank you so much for the 19. Your voice is so soothing, and it's making me sleepy. Oh, that is perfect. That is good for my watch time as well. People just falling asleep and watching the entire stream from beginning to end. Hell yeah. <laughs> Make a new video about inspirational quotes. Oh, the AI one, where it's like, other people have brain cells, and then there is you. Ah. <laughs> uh, huh? <laughs> hmm. Is it me or did the chat stop? It's still rolling on my end, at least. Sometimes it might buffer. <clears throat> Started watching you a few days ago. Love from India. Welcome in. I do hope you enjoy your stay. Since you're so into D&D, I'm sure you've heard of Baldur's Gate. Yes, indeed I have. I haven't played it yet. No, I haven't tried it yet. I mean, I, I know what it is. I've seen some videos and, like, reviews and stuff of it and the memes, but I haven't played through it yet. Great stream. It's so nice here. Yeah, so, so far, Magic Fay. I'm currently addicted to Helldivers, and if I get addicted to the second game... While already addicted to Helldivers, I'm not going to do anything productive for like a month. So, I need to pace myself. Because <laughs> otherwise it's going to be bad, okay? It's going to be bad. <laughs> Click is like the coolest dad we all want and need. Thanks for the love and support. J JJ, welcome in, you beautiful being. Mwah. Phoenix, thank you so much for the noble lasso. Mm. Can you speak German? I'm busy, yeah. Hello from... Uh, hello from Orientaro, Canada. Emotional support demons rule. They do! Sun Wolfie, thank you so much for the 20. You beautiful bean. First time at a click stream. Long time viewer, though, usually have a click on the BG when I'm coding or working on art. That sounds so good. That sounds so good. Thank you so much for the vibe, Terrence. You beautiful bean. <clears throat> My mom says she is biphobic because bi people are promiscuous. She doesn't think promiscuity is related to a person's values. I am bi and I've been in a happy relationship for nearly five years. Yeah, that's like the, the, the meme about it, I think. They're just like, oh my god, you're attracted to maybe more people than the normal person, statistically speaking at least. Oh my god, you must be everywhere all at once. I think, I mean, sure, maybe maybe some people are promiscuous, but that's perfectly fine as well. But when you think about it statistically, it, it probably isn't that much more even with that, because like even if you find, you know, more than one gender attractive, 
the amount of those other genders that are gonna find you attractive back isn't like another 50%, you know? If you strictly speak about, for example, uh, let's say, <clears throat> let's say, for example, I went out with the purpose of dating a dude, specifically. That doesn't mean my dating pool is gonna be every single man, it's gonna be other men that are either bi or gay or, or uh, have another label for it, and that's like, what is it, 10% or less? Something like that? So your dating pool is gonna increase by like 10% maybe, or 20% if you count 50% of the population roughly on an average. So 20% bigger in comparison to the original 50% or so 60%. Um, not twice the size, you know? So even statistically, it's like, it's a weird, weird stereotype. Anyway, by here, been married 18 years this year and strictly monogamous. And you see, it's people of all shapes and sizes, and that is amazing. <clears throat> I need a little advice. Today is my birthday, and someone I really like, uh, forget about it. But she saved my life uh, a few weeks prior. Should I be angry about it, or not reasonable for being upset? Sometimes, and I speak as someone who is bad at remembering birthdays, <clears throat> sometimes people are just shitty at remembering birthdays. <laughs> I'm one of them. I have forgotten birthdays in the past, or would have forgotten about it unless I was reminded of it somehow. Um, it doesn't mean I don't care about the person, it's just that for some reason, birthday dates don't register particularly well in my brain. <laughs> I don't know why. I think part of the reason is probably that birthdays for me were uh, had a bit of a negative connotations earlier on in my life for other reasons, so I always tried to like kind of avoid it, so I think that instinctively made me avoid it for other people too. Um, which isn't great, but uh, it's not necessarily a critique against the person specifically. So, I mean, it might be that they were really busy as well on something else. Maybe they went through a family crisis. So, you know, they forgot about your birthday because there was something on fire right in front of them. Uh, there are many reasons why people can forget a birthday. So I wouldn't uh, take it personally instantly, even though it might feel sucky. So that's like the positive spin on it. It might also be that they don't see you the same way you see them, which happens in life sometimes. And in that case, it's at least good to find out so you can so you can move on and find someone else who loves you back because uh, that's something everyone deserves, you know, if that's what you're looking for. Um, so there could be many things. There could be many things. I would uh, I would probably talk to them about it, but not not that directly. You know, I wouldn't go up and be like. Why did you forget my birthday? I'd be like, uh, hey, uh, how are you doing lately? What's up? And, you know, have more of a general conversation that might give you a hint. And then, for example, one sneaky thing you can do to see if they were really interested and be something like, you know, oh, how are you doing? And they, they talk about their stuff and then they ask you back, how are you doing? And you say like, ah, I celebrated my birthday last week and it was fun. And then, again, then you can get an idea if they, if they react with like, oh shit, I forgot about it. Then you're like, okay, maybe then they actually cared. If they're more like, aha, that's nice. Then maybe they see themselves as further away from you than you see the other way around. It's a good way to probe their view of the relationship without specifically asking, I suppose. <laughs> Will you be attending the Eurovision Song Constant in Malmö? What's your favorite Eurovision Song Constant song? I haven't been keeping up with it, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> TV Bag, thank you so much for the five. <clears throat> Your little demon helped me get through my job when I was very stressed. He's a cute little helper, and I know I can get through the day with him on my side. That is so sweet. Each code, thank you so much for the 20. That's way too generous. Okay, um, I need to I'm gonna switch menus. This is just all over the place, isn't it? Okay, here we go. Uh, Dan and Nino, thank you so much for the last. So, and Mario, thank you so much for the two. Looking forward to the next r slash place. I hope it's less calculated this time? Is that the right way to say it? Like, I enjoyed r slash place two years ago more than last year, honestly. Even though last year was bigger, even for our community. But it felt so... Parts of it felt manufactured, right? There were so many large factions and allies and massive streamers coming in and even, like, uh, you know, some of the big flags even had bots that were building them so, like, you couldn't take it over even if you tried. So, some of it started to feel almost too too organized? Does that make sense? We were relatively well organized too, but it was also like kind of casual and fun. So I hope it goes back to being a bit less intense in the wrong ways. Does that make sense? Uh, although to be fair, we still had a lot of fun and we got our demons in several places. I think we had a demon on the trans flag, we had a demon on the Swedish flag, we had, was it four demons on our own little rainbow flag? 
Um, I can't remember if we had it in another place too or if that was it, but we had a bunch of demons on there. It was really cool. I like how most of the people on the internet are weird. I don't have much of a social life because of personal mental stuff, but you click make me feel like I'm a friend when your videos play in the background. That is really sweet. I mean, I have a lot of my friends and stuff online as well nowadays, like all creator friends. I don't know any creator friends, IRL, really. I mean, I've met some people I work with, IRL, but most of the things is online. Hey, click, I keep coming back. Sorry, speak five languages, Arabic, English, Russian, French, and Japanese. Which do you think is the hardest to speak? Oh my. Um... English, Russian, French, and Japanese. Honestly, I don't I don't know which one would be the most difficult. Like, English and French at least use the same alphabet. Russian, Arabic, and Japanese all use different alphabets. So that sounds, sounds difficult by default, but it also depends on which your native tongue is. Oh, I, that sounds... I've heard someone say at some point that Japanese is relatively easy to speak, or is it Korean, maybe? Mm, oh, I don't know. Maybe Arabic, depending uh, depending on where you are from. Can you do a video on r slash me IRL? Maybe, that's a classic. Ace, greetings from Netherlands. Omni, welcome you, beautiful bean. It's my friend Morag's birthday. Could you wish him a happy birthday? Happy birthday, Morag, you beautiful bean. Eat a little bit too much cake. Oh, yes, indeed, you deserve it. Uh, let's see, am I caught up? I'm not caught up, God! I'm never caught up, Jesus Christ. A serious question, would you ever enter Eurovision? Like, as an artist? Probably not. I mean, I dabble in music, but I'm not a... Uh, <clears throat> dedicated musician, so to say. You quickly realize that sometimes the things you are celebrated for is the stuff that stands out in the current context you're in right now. So, for example, the stuff that people think I stand out with as a YouTuber is the fact that I do music and that I'm an engineer. But if I go to, for example, of a group of engineers, I don't really stand out as an engineer. I'm just a normal dude. I wasn't even a straight-A student or anything, you know? And if I go to a bunch of musicians, I'm just, you know, uh, I'm just some dude who plays guitars and sing, you know? I don't, I don't stand out in any specific way. So, I think in that way, I kind of like where I'm at right now, because the skill sets I have, I can make it the spice instead of the main thing if that makes sense. Like, I don't work with engineering actively anymore, but it still allows me to add stuff to my videos that people that don't have that background maybe can't. It makes me stand out a bit. Like, the confidently incorrect stuff in the Click Academy and so on and so forth. And I really like that. And that's something I realized in life in general. <clears throat> it's the stuff that isn't the norm where you're at right now that makes you stand out. But if you go to the context where that is the norm, that, was, that will not make you stand out. My friends, Morag's birthday is today. I did! Oh my god! Happy birthday again, Morag, you beautiful bean. Mwah. It's sad the kindest people live the hardest lives. And from snippets you mentioned in your videos, it seems that it is at least partially true for you too. I hope you're in a good place surrounded by people who love you. I mean, right now life is pretty good, honestly. Um, I think I can work on some stuff and that kind of thing, but like, there's nothing to really complain about actively, if that makes sense. You know, I think my problems I have right now are either like the consequence of the work I do, or they are mundane to the point where they're manageable, if that makes sense. So, that's good. It's quite nice. But yeah, I think, uh, I, I think also a lot of things, this doesn't go for everything, of course, but I think a lot of things is also in your head how big you make things. This doesn't go for everything, of course, like, tragedy does very much happen, hardship is very much real, but, uh, a lot of stuff in the modern world our brains aren't really adapted to. Um, our brains are still kind of unga bunga caveman brain. So sometimes things will happen in life and your brain's reaction is like, Oh my god, we, this can kill us! And it's like, will it though? Really, little brain? Is this really worth this reaction? And most of the time it's not. So I think sometimes our own mind makes us more miserable than we have to be. <laughs> I think someone once said that our brains are constructed to keep us alive, not to keep us happy. And I think that's a, that's a pretty good takeaway. Are you going to make Mango, Shark, and Emotional Support Demon matching pins by any chance? I have been working on some pins. Um, I have been working on some pins. I haven't chosen a platform yet to do it on, though. So we shall see. Long time watcher, first stream. Thank you for being positive and educational. Ooh, yes, indeed. As a teacher, you're a superhero. You also motivated me to finish my fiction novel with all your creativity and empowerment. Thanks again. That is so sweet, Phoenix. That is amazing. Oh my god, that's so cool. Thank you so very much. I'm very glad to have you here. What's your favorite Hell Diver stratagem? Oh, oh, uh, right now? I've always been a Railgun fan. Even even after the nerf, 
I don't know, there's just something about it that plays with my rhythm so well. It's amazing, it's like I'm one with it, it's, it's so good. Uh, I really like the Quasar Cannon, because I just feel like, Oh, Cannon Towers? No longer a threat. Bazap! It's so good. Um, in terms of, like, call-in air support, I am I am a, a sucker for the Orbital Laser. It's just a get-out-of-jail-free card, it's so satisfying. It's like, oh my god, we're getting swarmed! How about a laser? Bloop, everything is fixed. Uh, limited, though, only three permission, but, you know, it's, uh, it's so freaking powerful. <laughs> so, yeah, I have, I have a few goodies that I like. Well, thank you so much for making that Ace video a few weeks ago. I literally cried because we don't really got a lot of representation. Oh, thank you so much for the five, you beautiful bean. It was a very fun video to make, honestly. I like those subreddits. They have a very good vibe to them. How do you feel that your microphone pales in comparison to OTs on the number of googly eyes? Well, it's not the number of eyes that matter. It's how intensely you stare at your friends. Yeah, that's a good takeaway. Yeah. <laughs> the mustache fell off, though, because I used it for the intro in my insane parents. <laughs> ah, it kind of stays on. I'll yeah, see if it falls off. Have you ever played Terraria or Cult of the Lamb? Yeah, oh my god, I even have VODs up of Cult of the Lamb. Terraria I used to nerd so hard a few years ago. Oh my god, I have some kind of super world with, like, all the loot in the game. Do you play No Man's Sky? I have played No Man's Sky a decent chunk. I missed the, la the last expedition, though, so uh, I haven't uh, I haven't played it in a little bit. But I'll probably get back into it. No Man's Sky is that kind of game where I play it for like a month, a year, kind of. <laughs> Clicky, if I can call you that. Is my glow in the dark emotional support going to be here? Because it's not. Am I supposed to be stressed? No, no, it's just in the process of shipping. No one has gotten theirs yet. No one has gotten theirs yet. Gender is confusing. It sure can be. It definitely can be. Figuring yourself out in life in general can be a process, and that's okay. And it's okay to change your mind sometimes as well. But yeah, with the, with the emotional support demon, don't worry. It is on the way. It's just started shipping, so no one has actually gotten it yet. Have you ever been to or thought about going to a furry convention? I don't know what that is. Oh my god. I've been to some conventions in the past, but I've never been a super big convention goer, honestly. Um, I don't know why, really, but... Uh, Maybe. It's gonna be an interesting experience. My boyfriend and I, anniversary just passed. We've been together eight years. Also, are you going to make duck plushie? Yes, I will. Oh my god, I'm working on it. It's so gonna be so good. It's gonna be so good. Keep up the good work. Can I show it? Do I have it anywhere, like, easy on hand? Let's see. Um, I think I saved it on my desktop. Oh god, my desktop is a disaster. Oh, dear God, is this the file? Yeah, that's the file. Hell yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, let's see, how do I how do I show this? Uh, this is gonna be really ugly, isn't it? Okay, wait, hold on. Uh, where's my OBS? There's my OBS. Okay, so if I put OBS over here, and then I uh, go into gaming, maybe? Oh, it sort of works! Well, the chat box isn't here. Where's the chat box? There's the chat box. Okay, this is very improvised. I wasn't planning on using this, uh, this, uh, whatchamacallit scene today. Okay, can I zoom this out just a little bit? There we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then I can just scooch this to the side. So that's the current version, what it looks like. So right now, the stuff I've drawn on top is, like, the horns and the tuft. Because right now, the only thing I feel is that I still want to change, um, the name tag make the text a bit more simple and readable, and maybe make the circle tinier. Because I feel it's a bit wide right now, but that's a minor detail. Uh, the thing I feel though, it's like, it feels a bit too bald. There's no detail on the top of the heads. So one thing I was thinking about is adding like two small red horns that match the eye color on the evil one. And then add like a little, a little tuft maybe on the other ones, or maybe just the middle one and keep the derpy one uh, bald. Something like that. So you see like a little tuft here, maybe a couple of small horns. So that's like, it's it's in the very like detail planning. It's very detail planning now. So now it's like the small things, making sure the details are balanced, giving it a bit of personality. Uh, when can we buy it? Well, as soon as I manage to finish up the campaign, first I'm gonna have to make a demo print to make sure it looks good in practice. But uh, I think that could work. So I've been simplifying a lot, been changing the shapes of the heads, simplify the beaks, 
So like you don't have the mouth slit anymore, change like the size of the nostrils a bit, change the size of the eyes and the shape of them, fix the color schemes. So it's been it's been a process, but it's getting there. Give the derp a top hat. <laughs> oh my god. Thanks for being an inspiration, Savage. Thank you so much for the two. He's so round and squishy. Oh, he is. He is. Does the Cerberus duck have in Cerberus duck heads have individual names? Uh, no, not right now. Derp normal Angie. <laughs> uh, so I think it's gonna turn out quite well. But yeah, it's still like kind of in the planning phase. So I still have a little bit of polish left to do. I still need to send it back for uh, with like when I decide on the details. One more round so the blueprints turn out well. And then it needs to be demo printed to make sure all the details actually work in practice, which is like uh, a little bit of a thing. And after that, the campaign is gonna be ready to go. I like how the eyes are three, the three primary colors. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I went for. It's very nice. Because I felt with the first demo, it didn't really have enough stuff separating three heads and not enough personality. Well, the colors really did it. That did a lot. My advice to the trans pal on how to come out. Oh yeah, oh, yeah that's a good one. Depending on context, I suppose. But in this community, you definitely have a lot of knowledge regarding those things. Okay, let me move some stuff around again so I can actually read chat. There we go. Hell yeah. Click here is live. Great news. Yes, indeed. It is great news because it's me. Whoa. So I'm pretty excited <clears throat> about the duck. It's going to be fine. It's going to be very fun. I think it will probably go live after the pride ones because they are basically ready to go. Um, so I think we'll probably finalize the design before pride and then maybe sometime during the summer or towards the fall it's going to release most likely. Something like that. Hey, click glad to finally make it to the stream. Also got an emotional support team in a transit. Can't wait to get it. Obsidian, that sounds amazing. Oh my god, I'm so happy that Demon is like permanently available. I still sometimes see the, the like crappy knockoffs get the better of people. You know, probably when people, you know, gift it to each other and they just Google emotional support demon and they get like the, the Amazon crappy knockoffs. But it's much less than before. So that's good. The knockoffs can go eat ass. Uh, but I've seen they also rip off mm, a lot of other makeshift plushies. So they have set up like a whole scam industry just to steal the signs of limited runs of things. Very scummy. <clears throat> Is Cerberus duck getting toe beans? Yes, of course. Everyone knows that duck feet have toe beans. <laughs> it's anatomically correct. Hey, click glad to finally make it to the stream. Oh, got the motion. Yes, yes, Obsidian. Oh, I read that one. Hell yeah. Thanks for being an inspiration. My boyfriend and I... Oh, no, no, I read that one. Am I actually caught up? Oh my god, I think I'm caught up. Oh my god, yes. I'm so good at reading. It is my job after all. Do you trademark? I mean, it does... The, the intellectual property does belong to me, and I have talked to lawyers about it. But the problem with like the knockoff stuff is they don't give a shit if it's copyright. These like scam companies, they, they steal fucking Disney designs, you know? Uh, so... Oops, goodbye mustache. <laughs> uh, the problem is that they are seeded in different other countries that don't see these infringements as, as big problems. Um, you And they just move, move companies or move uh, pages rather. So we have taken down a bunch of those store pages, but the problem is that they still have the stock, so they just make a new store page with, with button mash names, and then that one gets taken down, and they just make a new one, and a new one, and a new one, because these websites seemingly have no standards for who can make a store on their page. So this is a problem on Amazon, it's a problem on Frugo, it's a problem on, on um, AliExpress, it's a problem on Alibaba, you know, all these kind of places. So uh, it's... Uh, bothersome, but I think now when the demon is back in stock permanently, that swoops up like a solid 90% that would otherwise only have the knockoffs to choose from, you know. So they still sell probably a little bit because people just get confused in the Google searches, but eh, what you gonna do? At this point, I think it's, uh, you can kind of ignore it because we have it back in stock permanently and that's what most people are getting anyway. Emma, thank you so much for the last of your beautiful bean. And Liz, thank you so much for the 10. Caught up? <laughs> oh, you absolute rascal. My god. Why are you blurry? Am I blurry? I don't think so. Maybe it went out of focus. Is it blurry? Maybe the streaming quality is bad. Let me refresh this page a bit. Let's see. No, I don't think it should be blurry. I think it, the camera just went out of focus for a bit, honestly. Hmm. 
maybe the bitrate is a bit low or something like that. I don't know. But it doesn't look too blurry. That looks fine, I think. For this kind of stream. It's okay. You can't see every pore in my face. Ha! <laughs> nice. I don't know if you remember, but you told me a while back that uh, that it would be the one to carry the torch after you. Oh yeah! <laughs> On another note, the algorithm has been shunning my channel pretty badly, and the advice. The algorithm is that kind of thing that is really hard to break into, and once you have broken into it, consistency is key. So, how did I break through the algorithm? I didn't know I get the boat! <laughs> So, I mean, I was doing this kind of content before that too, but to like moderate success, and then all of a sudden I just broke through the algorithm for some reason, because it stood out enough and people were interested enough and just bam, a couple of videos blew up, and then I just rode that wave, and I have been since. So, uh, it's really hard to break through the algorithm. Anytime you hated the algorithm, quite often, most of the time just because it seems so random, right? Sometimes I will release a video that I put a lot of effort into, it has a lot of like extra little researches or skits or something in it, and, and YouTube is just like, No, this kind of sucks! And they, it doesn't show it to anyone, even though like the watch time and the click-through rate is good, it's just like, No, people are just interested in this video, and it's like, you're just not showing it to anyone! And sometimes I will just whip together some random meme reaction, it takes me like a couple of days to make, and then YouTube is like, THIS IS THE SHIT! And they just push us in, like bam, million views. Like, what? 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 So, uh, yeah, that's the main thing. Like, I would say roughly it cancels out. For every video the algorithm shuns, you have one video that gets a surprising amount of attention. So, I would say, if you do YouTube regularly in that way, I would say it kind of cancels out. But, uh, I wish it wasn't so random, because sometimes it does really shun something you worked on for a long time, and then it just... Pfft. So, it's pretty, pretty weird. <clears throat> Adopting a kitten, we're naming him Oatmeal. Can you bless or curse him? We can do both. <laughs> Would you consider cosplaying as Astarion, maybe? I don't know who that is, sadly. DBZ Cat, thank you so much for the two. Uh, the quarantine probably also played a big card in breaking through algorithm. Yeah, I think so too. Because one thing during the COVID thing is that I noticed that uh, money went down because fewer advertisers were paying for ads because people were scared of the economy but more people were watching YouTube because people were locked inside. So it kind of like cancelled out. Oh my god, YouTube is like bugging out. I just got like the oatmeal kitten, like <laughs> five... Oh, the entire notification board is just filled with the same donation, that's weird. <laughs> I don't know why YouTube does that sometimes, it's really weird. Naughty Place, thank you so much for being a member for 14 months, that is amazing. A thorn is a smexy vampire. Oh, from Baldur's Gate. Oh, okay, yeah, then I know it is. I just didn't know the name. Why not call Cerberus Duck Cerber Duck? I don't know. I think Cerberus Duck has a nice ring to it. <clears throat> I think it has a nice ring to it. Thank you so much for the two, Lisa. You beautiful bean. Mwah. YouTube hates on content. A decent percentage of people would really love and pushes everything everyone has to love. Like puppies and 10 second dances. Yeah. Like YouTube in the last couple of years, it's pushed things that is very. Uh, is vanilla the right word? Or stuff that is very just like, this will appeal to a general public because it's easy to watch snappy editing and just like advertiser friendly, you know? It becomes very, very milk toast or whatever you want to call it, you know? And, uh, <clears throat> and that's a bit of a shame. I mean, YouTube growing and doing better is good for every creator on the platform to some extent, but uh, yeah, it's definitely more polished than it used to be in various ways. Back in 2020, I also lost a little sister by by bond, not by blood. She was 19 and trans and passed away from overwork. I was told I'm so glad I was able to help my American sister through a problem, so I have fun, uh, a fun few years. My family is one of bond. I think that goes for a lot of people. Thank you so much for the 50. That's way too generous, Dark Dragon. Um, I think it goes for a lot of people. Uh, family is not always the one you're born with, but sometimes it's the one you choose. And I know a lot of people that went through that exact same journey. Um, and I think it's important to recognize it. That's actually one thing I was bothered a lot by in school, when you always have these, especially in language classes, you know, these little assignments when people are like, draw your family, and they specifically instruct you to draw, like, you know, mom, dad, and siblings, and, and you're like, 
and my constellation doesn't really look like this. It becomes really weird really fast, and then you... I think one time I just lied, honestly. I remember on one assignment like that, I just lied. Because <laughs> I just wanted to get through with it. I'm like, this is... This ain't the place. What the hell? <laughs> Have you seen any indie YouTube animated shows? Is that a name of a channel, or is that a sentence without spaces? Uh, thank you so much, Pancake. You beautiful bean for the two. Mwah. My husky Ether loves listening to you while I cook dinner. That is amazing, Violet Strike. Oh my god, I love huskies. They're so freaking adorable. They're so cool. Uh, as a quick answer to that chat, don't share your age, especially if you're under 18. Yeah, good, it's removed. Um, not safe to do that online. I mean, this community is good, but you never know who's lurking. It's, it's online. Um, how to start a YouTube channel? Oh, you can do it in, in many, many ways. I, I think the best tip I've ever had for a starting a YouTube channel is find something you think is fun. And also make that overlap with what would work for people to watch. Like, if you're interested in video games, then you can make a video with a specific challenge that would make give the game a special twist regarding that video game. So you find the overlap between what is fun to watch and what is doable on YouTube versus what you're already interested in. That's sort of what I did. I was already interested in, you know, voiceover work and music and recording and sound processing. And then it's like, okay, what can I record with the skills I have? Oh, this kind of stuff looks fun, and then that's what I did. So I found the overlap between what I'm already good at and what was popular on YouTube. So that's like a decent philosophy to to have as a whole. I'm a young 2016 year old kid. Click is the same age as me. 216 year old. Jesus Christ. <laughs> ah! Going to be doing work experience at an animal hotel next month. Looking forward. That sounds so good. That sounds so cool. I love that. Click is trying his best to read all messages. Please be patient and go easy on the spam messages. Oh, that is very true. Yeah. It's impossible to read all of them. Wait, let me see, actually. Let me see. Because I think... Uh, does it say the stats? Uh, activity, maybe? No. It usually sometimes says the statistics, but maybe it's not visible quite yet. But I know that sometimes it would tell you the stats of like the amount of chat messages. Oh, let's see. Chat frequency. Okay, so so during like the beginning of the stream, it was almost 600 chat messages per minute. Right now when it's evened out, it's about one chat message per second. So if I don't read everything, it's not because of you, it's because I just can't read that fast. <laughs> Uh, Milo, thank you so much for the five. You beautiful bean. Hey, big hugs from Norway. Love your content. Katarine, Ka Karian, thank you so much for the 20. <laughs> That's how it's pronounced. Yes, indeed. Norwegian, Karian, Megad, very nice. I post daily, but algorithm still shuns me. I was eligible for monetization, but YouTube took it away due to me flopping so badly. I've lost hundreds of subs due to bots, which is unfortunate. It can be really hard to break into. And and sometimes in like consistency, it also means that uh, every individual video still has to be interesting enough to click on. But it's hard to give like an analysis on it if I don't see the channel. Actually, wait, let me take a look. Hold on. Uh, visit channel. Boop. Let's see. Um, do you post shorts, maybe? Uh, maybe it's shorts. Yeah, it looks like it's mainly focused on shorts. Shorts is notorious for being, like, really hit or miss. I'm gonna be honest. I mean, my experience with a short algorithm was basically that, oh, gee, a couple of shorts I didn't really like got 5 million views, and the ones I did like got completely shunned by the algorithm, and I had a short with 7 million views that made me, like, 20 bucks. And then I started having accounts on TikTok impersonating me because it was so easy to steal shorts. And then I said, I'm not going to do this anymore. <laughs> so shorts are notorious for being weird algorithmic -y. It seems that shorts are much less connected in the algorithm than regular videos. At least that's my experience. Shorts can just suddenly go super viral and then in a the day just flatlines and just dies completely. Sometimes it doesn't get views to begin with. Uh, regular video seems to feed into the same people much more consistently than shorts do. Uh, so, yeah, 
shorts is uh, is like the regular YouTube algorithm, but I'm absolute crack. Kulink, I've been enjoying your r slash insane parents videos. They're also quite relatable. Mom takes 400 every month out of 800 income. Netherlands. Oh my god, that doesn't sound good. I mean, depending on age, if it's for rent and stuff, but 400 sounds uh, a lot for, like, a single bedroom if it's living with your own family, you know? Damn, that's not, that's not nice. <clears throat> I hate how the mobile YouTube app opens uh, up on shorts a lot, though. It never shows new stuff from the smaller creators. Yeah, I think YouTube tried really hard to just compete with TikTok, honestly, so it pushed shorts a bit ridiculous for a while. Still kind of does. <clears throat> Clicky man, I recently got back to watching your content. I've been loving it once again. Keep up the great work. Oh, that's so sweet. Welcome back, you beautiful bean. Recently came to terms with my asexuality, and interacting with the community has helped me a lot. Do you think you'll cover more ace stuff in the future? Yeah, probably. Um, probably not super often. Um, I like covering it, but... Uh, I do, and this kind of goes for every type of video I make. It be easily becomes repetitive if I do it too much, um, and and that's not fun for anyone. So I will probably cover it in the future as well. I really enjoyed it, but I'll probably wait a little bit with it. My 2.5-year-old boy has been over four weeks at the hospital with broken femur. The night has been long for both him and me, and what saved me was watching your videos between 2 to 5 every night. He's home now at least. Oh my god, night entertainment at the hospital. I'm so happy to hear you're both good, that you're both fine and back home together. That is really scary. I'm really happy you got through it. Thank you so much. I hope I have an amazing day. The r slash insane parents is a mood. It's nice to be highlighted and give some nice perspective on it. it. It's something that I've always felt quite strongly about, because it's one of those situations in life where... Well, by default, there is like a power in the, uh, dynamic, you know, between parents and kids, right? And if one party misuses that power, it can turn really bad really fast. So, I think it's just one of those things that is important to talk about. Would you mind saying, I'm doing great at the gym, feeling a bit stuck lately. Progress is slow. Clara, you're doing great at the gym. And I think when it comes to fitness, it's very important to see the glasses half full. Like, even if you intended to be like, oh my god, I was gonna squat 200 pounds by the end of this month, but then you squatted uh, 180 instead. It's like, well, you still made progress, though, didn't you? And even even if you didn't make up some progress as you did, working out is still good. Like, there are a lot of health benefits that you don't see. And I think that's important with fitness in general. Um, don't see the glasses half empty. It's really easy to do with a lot of things. Thanks for reading my chats and looking at my channel. It genuinely means a lot to me. You motivated me more than I can ever say in words. That is so sweet. I wish you luck. I mean, Shorts YouTube is a wild place. And uh, I can't say I understand it completely either. It seems to be really, really hit or miss with Shorts, sadly. Greetings from the Milky Way. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> we'll click ASMR comeback. I mean, comeback is a strong word. I'll probably work on it at some point, but I've just struggled, like, keeping up with everything. There's so many stuff you want to do as a creator, but so few hours during the day, you know? <laughs> and also, like, other things in life take over sometimes. Like, you know, personal stuff, or friends, or just taking time off, honestly, or working out, or whatever it might be. So, uh, yeah, figuring out, like, what you want to spend limited hours on can be can be tricky sometimes. Sometimes I wish I didn't have to sleep. Like, oh my god, eight extra hours in the day to just, like, make content or hit the gym or just relax or go on adventure or whatever. Like, oh my god, it'd be so good. Why do I have to sleep? It's such a waste of time. Uh, hey, can you just say everything will be okay? Blue, it's a nickname, not my real name. It would mean a lot. Everything is going to be okay, Blue. Life is a roller coaster. It really is. And uh, there are so many people out there that can tell you the same story that they had a really bad dip and it was worth it to stick through that dip because after the dip comes uh, comes a hill and it's a bit tricky to climb it's a bit nasty but eventually you get to that top and then it's all gonna be worth it it's all gonna be worth it that is life and sometimes it's harder than it should be but it will get better clicky vicky thicky please say beans well there you go <laughs> 
Hi, click from Furryland. What's that made up language? I have been learning Swedish on Duolingo. Ursäkta, min pizza är för kall. <laughs> that seems like the first thing you should learn. It's going good over there in Sweden. Yes, it is. Thank you so very much. Mm, yes, indeed. Uh, soup, thank you for the two. The message is gone, sadly, for some reason, but thank you for the two. <laughs> I want to do a YouTube channel, but right now all I have is my parents doing, and it's just me singing. I've been singing for about eight years. I wonder if me doing covers would be would be a channel. It could be. There are many of YouTubers out there that do music, like they do covers, they do twists on popular music, for example. Um, so that can definitely be fun. Or for nothing else, just like to to put your work somewhere, you know? It's really nice to be able to show that stuff off. I used to do that even before I ever thought about having YouTube as a job, you know? So it can be really nice on a hobby level too. Making something into a job is, uh, can be a lot, but I would, I would try that for sure. That sounds like fun. Starting my truck license tomorrow. Oh, heck yeah, Dylan. That sounds amazing. I watch you often from Argentina. A big hug across the distances. Mr. Rod Rodrigo, that is so cool. That is so cool. Thank you so much for the hundred R's. <laughs> Dano, in the jobs I've had, my co-workers have always been the best part. Do you ever feel lonely when working so isolated on YouTube? The hundred they sört news. Oh my god, that makes me blush. Um, sometimes, yeah. Not so much that I don't have close friends or family or a partner and stuff like that. Like, my close relationships are roughly the same they have been for the past five, ten years or whatever. But I think it's more about the, the everyday interactions, like casual colleagues or casual after works or, you know, events that have to do with where you go to work or where you go to school. In that way, I think I miss the uni years the most. And not that I want to go back to school in that way. Um, it's, it's pretty much it's behind me in that way. But it's more the principle of being part of something bigger and knowing that everyone there is like at the same stage in life and doing similar things and the events around it and stuff. Uh, that is something you miss with YouTube. And it might also be because of where I live, to be honest. I know a lot of people move when they start doing YouTube to be closer to other people that do similar things. Um, so that's one option, I suppose, but I haven't really seriously thought about it. Um, but that is a downside with, I think, running your own business in general, when you run like a small company like that, um, it can very easily become more isolating than a normal job. So, eh, I mean, like I said, I have a bunch of close friends, I have creator friends, partner, family, everything like that. I think it's just the, the more casual everyday interactions that you sometimes miss. <clears throat> <laughs> Which partner of <laughs> tea? I just beat a year-long infection. Thank you for making me laugh and feel a little bit more sane. Dyslexic, ADHD, and queer. Your work makes me happy. Aw, I do hope uh, I do hope you feel better. That sounds like a like a pretty long battle. Thank you so much, Tara, for the five. Click, please rap. Dance, monkey, dance. <laughs> A click, you remind me of a fresh out of jail uncle that gives the kids beers when the parents aren't looking. Slay! <laughs> I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't that be like a like a culture shock? Wouldn't it? It's like, but, but Uncle Click, we're only 20, we can't drink beer. And I'll be like, Birch, my cousins down in Switzerland got drunk when they were 16, please. That's one thing that always strikes me as, like, weird sometimes when I catch, uh, catch, like, American drama occasionally on, like, Twitter or something, and someone would be like, Oh my god, underage drinking! And they were, like, 20. <laughs> and I'm like, fam, most of the people I knew started drinking when they were, like, fucking 15. <laughs> okay, maybe, like, not, not, like, on a regular basis, but most people tried alcohol around that age. Like, I think I tried the first time when I was, like, 16, maybe? Something like that. Not a good thing to do, mind you. Uh, it's a stupid thing to do, but I think it's uh, naive to pretend we don't. In Germany, it's legal for 14... 14 year olds! Isn't it 16? Isn't it the legal drinking age in Germany if we're going to the pub is 16, right? Not fucking 14. What do you mean? Legal for 14 year olds? Are you kidding me? No, come on. <laughs> it's like 10 in Russia! <laughs> oh my 
my god. 21 is a weird age for drinking. It's 18. Yeah, especially like, you know... That's one thing that always struck me as odd about America. It's like, okay, now you're 18. You can drive a big car. You can enlist in the military and literally go shoot people and get shot. Two for one. Uh, you can get married and have kids. You can make all these massive life decisions. But you can't go to the pub and drink a cider. How are those things even comparable on a scale of, like, seriousness? Oh my god. You can smoke? You can smoke, but you can smoke when you're 18, but you can't drink? That is, that is a fucking joke. <laughs> hey, Click, do you know when we can get the Pride stuff? Uh, probably around Pride Month, so... June, right? It's June, right, isn't it? Yeah. It, it's always a bit confusing, because it's, like, different months, depending on where you are. So here, here it's not June. Um, so it always, like, messes me up. 14 for beer, 16 for wine and stronger stuff. They actually separate it. That's interesting. Huh. 14 when you drink with your parents here in Germany. I mean, honestly, I'm not really against that principle either, you know? Because you're probably at some point gonna be, you know, in a party feeling excited or peer pressured or whichever, whichever adjective you want to use for it. And uh, <clears throat> I think having experienced the notion of what it feels like to have a buzz before that is probably very valuable. So, like, I'm not particularly against the idea of parents being like, yeah, Timmy, sit down. Now you're, like, 17 or whatever, or 16. Let's have a couple of beers together. So you, like, learn what it feels like, because you're not, now you're at the age where you're probably going to get dragged along to some kind of party. And also make it clear that, you know, if you ever get too drunk, call, because your safety is more important than the parents being angry, you know? I think those are two pretty healthy ways. Maybe it's controversial for some people, I don't know, but, like, realistically speaking... Oh, it says OBS is disconnected? Really? Okay, well, now it's connected again, apparently. I don't even sure if anyone noticed that. Anyway, so, uh... So that's one thing that I've been, like, thinking about. Like, wouldn't that be better? Because I remember when I got really drunk the first time, and I'm, I'm saying this because I experienced kind of the opposite. Not in the dangerous context, but I remember the first time I got really, really drunk. I was, I think, 16 or freshly 17, something like that, around that age. And uh, it was the first time me and a bunch of friends had a lot of alcohol. We had some, like, older friend or relative that bought a bunch of stuff for us. You know, we had some Jägermeister, vodka, all that kind of, kind of nasty stuff. And... Uh, one of the reasons I got so drunk is because I didn't know what it felt like to be drunk. I had no idea what, like, limits were or how much you can drink, depending on body weight or resistance, like, nothing like that. So, I remember distinctly, like, I had a buzz, because now I remember it, and I was like, oh, well, that was pretty tipsy, you know? And then I just chugged, like, a glass of Jaeger or something, because I was like, yeah, let's get the party started, because I was stupid and I had no idea what I was doing, and that's what fucked me up. So, if, if I had a better frame of reference before that day... To be like, this is what it feels like to be a buzz, and this is what you can expect, depending on how much you drink, is like, uh, yeah. I mean, I was also really young and really stupid. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> so, uh, so in that way, I'm not really, like, against that idea of, of teaching, like, the younglings in your family what it's like to feel a buzz, for example, and learn where your own limits are. Um... But, uh, yeah, probably it depends, controversially-wise, depending on where you're from. Uh, thank you for your content, sir. Your videos are thought-provoking. made me a level of mindfulness towards your audience that is beautiful. Thank you. Smoking is 21 in the U.S. now. Okay, so they changed it. Instead of reducing drinking to 18, okay, whatever. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not big on smoking either, so maybe it's not a bad thing, but damn. Hey, Click, have you ever thought about doing an emotional support team in a mango t-shirt? I do have a couple on my on my merch store. I mean, they're not t-shirts, they're like sweaters, but they're really nice. You check them out in the description. Hell yeah. Thank you so much for Royal Lasso. Uh, fun fact throwback. You can get legally married in some US state as young as 22, but not divorced until 18 Koth Bible Belt Phantom. As young as 22, but not divorced. Wait, did the numbers get mixed up? Like married 18, divorced at 22, I guess? I think the numbers got backwards, right? Because otherwise it makes no sense. Hi, Clicky. I'm Rebecca. Thank you for being such a wholesome YouTube presence. I have a glow-in-the-dark emotional support team headed my way. That is amazing. Thank you so much for the five. Renea, thank you so much for the Nobel Lasso. And Anya, thank you so much for being 15 months. Absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. 
I feel like you've been the human version of the brown shark plushie you have. <laughs> you just looked like you'd be a shark, but a nice shark. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, oh my god. Korea used to count the age plus one, so if you're 24, it would be called 25. They changed it to world standards recently, so now the legal age is 2019. But it necessarily didn't change, it's so confusing. But that sounds confusing, yeah. I'm not sure if I grasped it, honestly. <laughs> I think they meant 12. Wait, what? As young as 12? I'm pretty sure for men- Oh! Oh, the chat didn't mean 22, they meant 12. Oh god, what the fuck? Oh. Ah. Children can be married off at 12 in some of the US. Jesus Christ. And can't divorce until they're old enough to sign a contract at 18. Yeah, exactly, because... <laughs> oh, God, to make this super important adult decision of getting divorced, you need to be a legal adult. But you can get married at 12? Wow. Wow, that is unhinged. Will you be bringing back the emotional support team? And that's a keychain. I want to carry the emotional support team wherever I go and keep your belt. I mean, it was quite popular last time. Maybe we'll bring it back again. Uh, when Makeship does its yearly, like, rerun thing, I think we'll rerun a bunch of stuff. That'll be a lot of fun. Twelve. Jesus freaking Christ. What did I do when I was twelve? Subtract ten from twenty-two. <sighs> what did I do when I was twelve? I was in sixth grade. What was I doing with my life at twelve? I definitely had not had a relationship yet. I had a couple of awkward crushes at school that went nowhere. Uh, I definitely had not explored intimacy yet. I think the most things I do was go to school, get mediocre grades, and play Warcraft 3. And sometimes I went to, like, martial art practice. And I played guitar. No, wait, I didn't even play guitar yet. I didn't even do that. Holy shit. Yeah, I was a literal, literal dysfunctional child. That is wild. That is absolutely wild. Oh my god. <clears throat> like 12. You were you were still like at the age where you were basically joking about cooties, you know? Oh my god, you kissed a girl. That's so gay. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's uh, that's absolutely insane. Oh my god. Ugh. First grade of middle school at 12. What do you mean getting married at 12? <laughs> I'm 31. I'm not married still. What the fuck? You click. You're the reason I'm proud to be a sved. Uh, thank you for bringing some joy into this cold winter country. Oh, that's very sweet. Welcome in your beautiful bean. I do hope you enjoy your stay. X Rightonino? Something like that. Thank you so much for being a noble lasso. You're beautiful bean. I totally nailed that name. Oh, yes, indeed. Did your school get off early every Wednesday? Ooh, ooh, that brings back some memories. Not on Wednesdays, but I remember we got off early on Fridays in, like, fifth grade, I think it must have been. Something like that. It was amazing. We got off at, like, one. We had one class after lunch, and that was it. And I remember we had this little uh, convenience store. So me and my friend, we went there one, one time on a Friday, and he had a GameCube at home. So we would play the crap out of, like, uh, Smash Bros., and Pikmin, and Mario Kart, and we were like 11. So we had, I think we had a weekly allowance back then of like 50 Swedish crowns, which is roughly five bucks. So, but we had 50 bucks, five bucks each, so we had like 10 bucks. And back then, you had these chewing gums, these tiny little wrapped chewing gums that costed 50 euro, which is half a Swedish crown. You don't even use this anymore because of inflation. So that was basically cents, right? So we had a hundred Swedish crowns, and every chewing gum only costed half a crown. So we bought two hundred of these gums and had them in one of these like transparent plastic bags that like <laughs> you basically carried over your shoulder because we were so small. And then we sat and played GameCube the entire evening on this Friday and just chewed through two hundred chewing gums. That is the only time in my life that I have woken up with like workout pains, you know, post-workout pains you get when you go to the gym. I had that in my jaw for like two days. <laughs> that was so good. Plastic bags that brings me back. Yeah, you remember plastic straws? Those paper things that melt in your 
goddamn drink, I swear to God. And then, like, all the richies are like, oh my God, but we need our private jets. But then, of course, the argument is that, have you ever seen a turtle choke on a private jet? Think not. That's not the problem. Ugh. <sighs> But yeah, that was an amazing experience. 200 chewing gums. That was so good. Oh my god, I had pain in my jaw for like two days. That was amazing. That's how you get the, ch the Chad jawline. You chew a lot of chewing gum when you're a kid. Like, mm, yeah. Hell yeah. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if that's like an unironic tip that is trending on TikTok right now for looks maxing. Working out that jaw. Oh, yes indeed. I have reusable plastic straws. I got them the other day. Worth every penny. That is actually a good idea. I should get that. That is a good idea. The paper ones make me go nuts. <clears throat> I have seen a jet eating a turtle. That is an interesting thing to witness. Will they be doing a rainbow mango? We have the mango with the rainbow bow tie. That's gonna be the pride mango. It's really cute. You were mogging as a kid? Is that the new... Is that the new slang for looks maxing? Hold on. I feel like such a boomer. Mogging means you look better than someone else. Think of mogging as one-upping someone in terms of physical appearance or overall attractiveness. A mog usually refers to a man who dominates other males in the room. Sounds pretty gay. Uh, often due to their height, body type, build, or facial structure. I was definitely not mogging as a child. I was the opposite of mogging as a child. Jesus Christ. I was small, had iron deficiency, was pale, skinny, and sickly. And I played way too much video games. That was me as a kid. Dear God, I was not mogging. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, I learn something new every day. I thought it was just looks maxing, but apparently not. Click is an alpha male. Oh, yes, indeed. I dominate all the other men. Mm. Click should go to Mogwarts. <laughs> well, to be fair, I am 6'2", at least. So I'm not going to be one of those, you know, r slash Tinder boys that are like, I wrote that I'm 6'5 in my profile, and then everyone is drooling on them because Tinder is a hellscape. Um, sadly not. I'm too short for the Tinder game. Even though I'm 6'2". <laughs> Sad. What did I just walk into? We were talking about mogging. <laughs> I was kind of worried it was a slur at first. I don't know what is a slur anymore. I'm gonna be honest. I, I'm so scared of words, man. I remember one time me and my editor, we accidentally censored a word we thought was a slur, but it wasn't. So the whole comment section was like, what the f- <laughs> Why are you censoring this word? And we were sitting there, like, watching the comments, like, ah, this is awkward. We thought this was a slur. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that was... The word twink, right? Yeah, it was twink. I, for some reason, in the context of the posts in that video, it was, like, it was used in a very, like, uh, nasty way. So I was like, oh, yeah, this is definitely this word. Twink sounds slurry, right? <laughs> so we just censored it out, and, and I, all, all the comments are like, this, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> are you saying this is a slur? <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> oh my god. Oh. oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. I'm always mogging, parentheses, dominating other men. Mm, yes, indeed, Satan. That's how you do it, baby. Hell yeah. Can you please read the comment above and below mine? What? I don't... <laughs> I don't know what to look for, man. What? <laughs> I am only one meter tall, and my waist is only two inches. I'm not like other girls. <laughs> I'm a literal baby pony. I'm not like other grills. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's wholesome vibes only. Uh, we give you the T pass click. You can say twink as much as you want. Do you need a pass to say twink? Is that a thing? Am I gonna be cancelled on Twitter tomorrow? Oh god. Not again. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that's one thing you get desensitized with as a creator. Like, <laughs> people trying to cancel me on Twitter. I've seen people try to cancel people on Twitter for the wildest, dumbest shit, man. I wouldn't be surprised anymore. <laughs> the Twink Pass? <laughs> twink Gate? <laughs> what is a Twink? Oh, now we're getting into the educational part of the stream. This is good. This is good. Are you Sigma or Alpha? Oh, my. My God. Is this something I should put on my... on my? Uh, I know some people put it in their uh, Twitter bios. You know? In Twitter bios, you either have... <laughs> you either have pronouns or you have alpha male. <laughs> Those are the two options. Ah, uh, yes. The two genders of, of Twitter profiles. Pronouns or alpha male. <laughs> 
It's such. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> oh, I hate the online world, man. Has someone tried to cancel you before? Yeah, a few times actually. Usually it. Uh, I, I mean, I'm not sure if not all of it I would count as it ever went viral enough. I would ca I would count it as a proper cancellation, but that is definitely like the the thought behind it, I suppose. The person like making the stuff is definitely hoping for it to catch on. Um, oh God, what have I not been attempted to be canceled for at this point? I was about to say that sounds great out of context, doesn't it? Uh, let's see, let's let's wind back the clock. What was the first thing? Oh yeah, I had a falling out with an editor who was very unreliable and was uh, <clears throat> lying a lot. <clears throat> so they tried to... I'm not sure if cancel is the right word, but they tried very hard to spread rumors about, like, I didn't pay editors or whatever. Even though I had literal paper trails that was proving the payments, a very odd thing to lie about. Uh, then I had a couple of odd artists that I commissioned many years ago that uh, was uh, telling people I wasn't paying artists now, so now I don't pay anyone, apparently. Even the same thing there, you know, all the invoices were paid, so that was really weird. I'm not sure why people lie about stuff that can literally be proven by, like, the IRS, you know, but okay. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, I, ha I had someone make allegations against our podcast, Otis and I, and my podcast, that were trying to make us out as ableist, and we invite guests on the podcast, only to bully them and, like, call them slurs, but then we cut the episodes so no one ever knows. So we just invite people on to bully them, even though we record everything from the guest side as well, which is, like... <laughs> You know, if we're gonna secretly bully people, that's the dumbest way to do it, so... Oh, that was pretty wild. Luckily, we still had all the recordings, so it was very easy to disprove, but, you know, uh... Yeah, that was, that was interesting. Um... Uh, pyramid person tried to cancel me for an array of different things, uh... Suggesting that I'm a, a sex pest, suggesting that I support... Doing shady things with very young people, uh... Suggesting that I am racist, ableist, homophobic, a few of those things. Um, what else? Oh yeah, a, an ex-staff once tried to kind of cancel me for being an abuser, because, uh, because demodding people that make the team uncomfortable is apparently abuse now. Uh, there's probably a bunch of other stuff that I'm, I don't remember, but yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like, fam. Damn, so, sometimes I, I look at this job and be like, oh my god. I mean, it's it's worth it, I suppose. It's it's a very fun job. I really love what I do in the community. But it, it's such a shame because it takes such a small amount of people to ruin so much, if that makes sense. The curse of the online world and algorithms. John says, Internet Uncle Gay here. Twink is just the word for an 18 to 21 year old man, usually gay. It's the gay slang and predates my coming out in the 1990s. So you can use twink all you like. Heck yeah. I thought it meant like skinny gay guy. Like, you know, that, that's sort of what it meant. That's the definition I had before. Maybe it has multiple definitions or maybe I've been misinformed this entire time. Click is the ultimate alpha pronoun <laughs> male. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> Is there a limit on how many rainbow plushies can be ordered? Any discounts? I haven't talked to them about discounts yet, but there's no limit, no. Everything that is ordered gets shipped, basically. Erissa, thank you so much for the 17-month membership, you beautiful bean. Did someone call Kalika Twink? <laughs> oh my god. Click, are you okay? I mean, nowadays I'm pretty okay, I would say. YouTube does come with its wacky periods, but I think now... Honestly, what was so wild about the drama last year is that I realized that, like, 90% or 80% maybe, 80% of, like, the crap I've gone through in this job, as in terms of, like, people coming after you or hating on you or making up stuff about you, all came from, like, the same weird little hate group bubble. And they would, like, swoop up people that got... For example, banned off a of Discord for acting weird, or, you know, any, any like, miscellaneous reason. And they would swoop them up, and they had this little bubble thing. And I realized after everything settled, like, damn, like, everything came from this group. Like, 80% of those, like, weird allegations and stuff all came from this little bubble of people just hyping each other up to be, like, hateful. So weird, man. So weird. People sitting in Discord and isolating themselves really do come up with some wild things sometimes. Is the click okay mentally? That is a good question. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm doing pretty well. Life is life is pretty good overall, to be honest. I can't complain that much. Even though sometimes I do, just because it's fun to rant. Twink also implies skinny, but the age matters too. Okay, nice. I got half the definition right. Thank you, John. Now I feel much better about my vernacular. 
Click is definitely a hunk. I don't think I'm buff enough to be a hunk yet. Sadly. Give me, give me like a couple years to bulk. <laughs> Click is more daddy than twink. <laughs> Click is more uncle than twink. Does that sound worse? Maybe that sounds worse. Click is not cancelled. He's just fighting the new furry allegations. Daily, I don't know what that is. Denial is the best weapon. For what it's worth, your content makes my day every day. I love listening to your videos while I do accessibility testing. So screw haters. Thank you so much, Arissa. You're beautiful being honestly. The last year or so has been pretty chill. The last year or so has been pretty chill. I think it came to like a boiling point and then kind of everything was aired out in a way. And now it's been pretty chill. Like, like smaller things happen from time to time, but uh, usually those things are in the realm of like, you know, it's addressed within a day or so and then it's fine. And it's usually quite mundane things in comparison. <clears throat> so, meh. It, no, right now it's, it's pretty good. Click is just borderline himbo. <laughs> Can't find the Venn diagram. <laughs> Any advice for someone starting engineering? Have fun. Go to parties. Socialize. Someone once told me that engineering can be the worst five years of your life or your best seven. For me, it was about five and a half, but uh, I think that quote has a little bit of truth in it, you know? Don't always just push yourself hard. It's okay to fail exams sometimes. It's okay to party. It's okay to socialize, because some of those people are also going to be the ones you study with and the ones that might help you out if you struggle with a subject. So... Remember the social part. That's how you stay sane when uh, when you do engineering every day. Twink also means tricked out alt in World of Warcraft. Damn, it has a lot of like meanings. Twink is a very, a very, very cultured term, it seems like. God damn. <clears throat> hey dude, hoping you're having a good day. The D&D party I ran for recently tried to kill a dragon with cocaine. <laughs> Which sounds like something one of your characters would do. That is amazing. Oh my god, that's so good. An engineer that socializes, that would be a first. Honestly, my experience with engineers what is that they're quite social. I, I think a lot of people blossom during that time in their lives because you were in an environment that wasn't so high school hierarchy, if that makes sense. And people could just like kind of be themselves and have fun. It was quite wholesome. First live stream. Love your content. Thanks for making it. Thank you so much, Sia, for coming in. You're beautiful, but I do hope you enjoy your stay. <clears throat> uh, Dean, a.k.a. Marek, 200. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you so much. Click the fellow Mark. Thank you for existing. I love watching you. You make me survive. I'd like to ask, though, have you considered reading non-US Reddit posts? US uncultured unhindness is alienating. <laughs> I think it's mainly just a linguistic thing, honestly, because... You know, I could read Swedish posts, but it's a very small portion of my audience that is Swedish. Um, and other languages is difficult, just because of audience demographic and the languages I speak. So, uh, tricky, I think, in that way. English is like the one of the bigger common languages online, at least in the portion of the online world I spend time with. So... I think it sort of comes with the territory, but yes, I agree sometimes that sometimes the American-centeredness can make you feel a bit nuts. <laughs> um, for better or worse, sometimes it's really fun and rewarding, sometimes it makes you feel nuts. So I think it's like the good with the bad. Any update on the maid outfit calendar? Yeah, I was, I was gonna do some stuff with it, but then it snowed again, so... <laughs> Honk is any hot. Happy late trans visibility day, Maddie. Thank you so much for the two. Hello, Click. Watching your videos is always a great way to unwind after work. You're definitely the main character in a good wholesome way. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much, Marvel. Some finally, sometimes someone recognized it. And thank you for the royal lasso. That's way too generous. You beautiful bean. Mwah. How many of your viewers are from the UK? Maybe I would go on a limb and say like eight um, percent. I can actually check. Hold on. I mean, it can vary a bit throughout the year, I suppose. But let's see. So, right now, it says 6.9%, 43% US, 6.6% German, that used to be higher, that used to be almost 10%, Canada, 5%, Australia, 3%, so it's very, like, English-speaking country dominated, apart from Germany, Germany is, like, the one standing out, 6.6% Germans, what up, fellow Germans? 6.9%, <laughs> nice, I know, like... Germany nailed it. Oh, no, sorry. England nailed it. 6.9. Sorry, Germany. You're 6.6. .6. You're almost satanic, though. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yes, indeed. Oh, it's so good. 
how many duchies? Oh, let's see. Can I? I have to extend it though. It only shows like top four. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, let's see. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's see if it's search instead. Let's see. Can I like? Does it actually? Because it has like. Uh, mine is in Swedish. It, it can show up as either name. That's so confusing. I hate that. Uh, wait, maybe I can. Can I do like. Uh, no? Okay, maybe it's. Uh, oh? Hey, there we go. It works. Okay, because the difficult part in Sweden, you can call uh, Dutch either Nederländerna or Holland, which is stupid. So now I found it. It was the other name. Uh, it is 1.8%. That's actually quite a lot. Hell yeah. <laughs> nice. That's not bad at all. Looks like the Dutch average watch time is also pretty decent. Hey, go Dutch. <laughs> nice. Error sound. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sweden is 2.2%. It's actually gone up a bit. It used to be 1.3. <clears throat> Finland, 1.4%. Hell yeah. Uh, what else do we have? France, 1.5%. Hell yeah. France representing. Denmark, only 1%. Oh, Danish people. Don't you love your fellow Swede? Don't answer that. <laughs> what do we have, like... I'm gonna see. What's... Uh... Where's Switzerland? There it is. 0.5%. That's not that much. Not too bad. I mean, Switzerland is, what is it, like 7 million people? Eh, could be a bit higher. Seems like the Germans are more interested in my content than Swiss people. <clears throat> Hell yeah, 1.5%, booyah. USA, like 43%. <laughs> America, fuck yeah. America. Austria. Uh, Estherikia. 0.7%. Hell yeah. Both British and Irish. How many Irish viewers? Ireland, 0.5%. Nice. Spain. Oh, wait. Uh, it's always so confusing because I always have to translate as well. Hold on. I mean, that at least starts with the same letter. Isn't it here? Wait, where is Spain? Am I just being, am I just being blind and silly? Where is Spain? Ukraine, 0 0.3. Greece, 0 0.3. Thailand, 0 0.3. Argentina, 0 0.3. Where is Spain? No way, Spain is less than Argentina. Spanish people, please. Oh, oh, no, there it is. I completely missed it. It's blue text for some reason. That's really weird. Okay, it's 0 0.7. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that's about that's about what I expected. <laughs> Zeth, thank you so much for the for the membership for, for 10 months. You beautiful beans. Joel, thank you so much for being a lasso. Erissa, thank you so much for the time. I may be visiting Norway and Sweden later this year as a conference speaker. It's crazy how many roles include engineer. I am an accessibility engineer. Yeah, engineer can mean anything. It's also funny how certain things like translate differently. For example... In Sweden, you call civil ingenieur is basically the same thing as a master in engineering, but directly translated in English, like civil engineering, is something completely different. That's like specifically, you know, city planning kind of engineering. So that's very odd. Like civil engineering in Swedish is just a general engineering degree. It's basically equivalent to calling it a master. It's not the same as a master, but basically every civil engineer degree is a master's degree. It's, I'm not sure where, where there isn't a crossover. But uh, in English, it's more specific, so confusing. <coughs> Hello from Ben. Drink a bottle of water. <laughs> I just remember from the last video, it was so good. It's like, Oi, mate, to take the piss out of it, old man, you should just shag a lad rotten. <laughs> so good. I I'm gonna use that more often, like, Oh, mate, you think it's hot over there, eh? You should shag him rotten. Yeah. <laughs> Oi, bruv. 
It is definitely my fault that a Dutch watch time is so high. I watch your videos as background noise almost every day to the point I don't know how many times I've watched everything. That is amazing, Phoenix. Keep doing that. Hell yeah. Make your Dutch brethren proud. Ferret Fiend, thank you so much for being a royal wow, so that's way too generous. Click buddy, are you okay? Lamau. Do I look not okay? Is it the camera angle? Maybe? I feel pretty good, actually. I'm getting a bit hungry, though, but otherwise I feel pretty good. <laughs> Click buddy, are you okay? Damn, it's already eight in the... I'm in the stream so long? How long have I been streaming for? Oh my god, time really ran away. Jesus Christ, maybe I should get some food. M Mind engineer sounds like a high-level spell and metal as hell. I know, right? That sounds amazing. Lisa, thank you so much for gifting five subs, you amazing bean. Any plans to go over your subreddit anytime soon? It seems to have been a bit since last time. Yeah, I really should, shouldn't I? I really should. Bonjour, Mr. Click. I've been watching you for two years and showed you to my sister. And she looked at me with a memorable face of intrigue. While, is that why you are social in that way now? Oh my. Oh my, see? See how life just takes certain directions, doesn't it, Victor? Mm, yes, indeed. Oh, wait, uh, Anki, uh, Ank, Anki, Mewis? I probably butchered that. Thank you so much for being a lasso, you beautiful being this morning. Bounce, bounce. I showed my bro, completely perplexed. Oh, yes, indeed, that's how you know it's good. That's how you know it's good. How many countries have you been to? Oh, all three, like, oh my god. I'm not even sure if I, can I, can I count that high? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a lot, you know. Because <laughs> it adds up, you know. Uh, I mean, I've been to Sweden, Norway, Finland, Denmark. Uh, I've been to you know, Germany, Switzerland, Italy, Spain. I haven't been to Portugal, I don't think. Uh, U.S. Does that count like one country? I guess a bunch of different states, but only one country, I suppose. Um, <clears throat> uh. I've also been through, uh, what's it called? Um, yeah, I don't know. I would have to sit down with a map and actually, like, poke at it to properly, to properly, like, count everything, I think. Please come to Portugal. I heard you got cheap beer, which is, which is a big plus. I want to see you read Arsla's Accidental Racism. I did a while ago. It's so funny. During COVID, they always had the funniest posts because there was always like, you know, some sign about social distancing. And then it was like, stay apart. But then of course, because it's supposed to be progressive and nice, they have like one white person and one black person on the poster. And it just looks like they're promoting segregation. <laughs> And it's like, it's about COVID, but because they tried to be wholesome and inclusive, it's just like, oh no. Oh, this looks so bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. I love those ones. Uh, it really peaked during COVID. It was so good. It was so good. The US is just 50 countries pretending to be one. Yeah, I suppose. Thanks a lot for your amazing content. Click Teresa tr tr Priya. Thank you so much for the five. And Dennis Foxy. Thank you so much for the lasso. Mwah. Cheaper in Portugal. Sign me up. Oh, hell yeah. Smex is cool, but have you given a homeless man baked fresh goods? That sounds amazing. Please do more r slash Garfield minus Garfield. Oh my god, wait, I have something. Hold on, I have, I have something. This is the official Garfield minus Garfield booklet. I also have one that is like uh, mint condition, still in wrapping, just because I found it on eBay for like 50 bucks and I was like, yes, this this is what I want to collect. Uh, Dawn, thank you so much for five gifted subs, you beautiful bean. It's like the official book that is endorsed by Jim Davis directly. It's so good. And you have like all the Garfield minus Garfield stuff. It's hilarious. It's a bit difficult to read. Oh wait, maybe I can read it on the screen and hold it up. It's like, I am drawing faces on all the pillows. This <laughs> is this nothing? 17,887, 17,888, 17,889, 17,890 arm hairs. One, two, three. This is just this is just COVID vibes. This is just like killing time in quarantine. I swear to God. What the fuck is Garfield minus Garfield? Garfield minus Garfield is just comics where Garfield used to be, 
but Garfield is removed and the punchline just becomes really dark and weird. So like this is one for example where it's like he's just laying in bed and like all right, all right, fine. <laughs> And normally it's like the cat being frolicky and weird, but like now there's nothing there. And this just feels like, you know, you're a millennial that got a new job and you have to get up at six in the morning every day. <laughs> and, you're, and you're just done with it. <laughs> God, that's so relatable. Wow. And this, this, <laughs> oh my God, it's so sad. Check this one out. Growing old is sad. So many dreams never to be fulfilled. <laughs> and that's it. That's the whole comic. It's so, it's so horribly relatable. Holy shit. They should rename it Schizophrenic John. Yeah, some of the comics do be really, really like that. But it's, 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 it's surprisingly close to home. It's so bad. Or like, just this one. This, this, this is just, nah. That's it. <laughs> it's amazing. This is the best book I own. This is the best book I own. Okay, let's see. <laughs> this one is also one of those. I feel like I could conquer the world today. I couldn't get the front door open. And yeah, that's just that's just the vibe, isn't it? Man, I feel I feel so many of these comics in my spine. Oh shit, look at this one. This is basically my job right now. Th this is what it feels like to be a YouTuber sometimes. Nothing. Nothing. Mr. Funny Man! That's just me. That's... That's just me. <laughs> this is... Oh, I have the soup. Oh. <laughs> that's like when you're doing something super mundane and the sheer dread of existence just hits you like a train. Goody. This, this is so good. Oh my god. <clears throat> Let's see what more do we have. <laughs> this this just feels like ADHD. This is just fucking ADHD in a nutshell. Do you ever feel like you're missing out on a lot of things? And then just sitting there but your body refuses to move? God, this is just this is just ADHD, isn't it? Shit. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this is like so, all, all this is so bad. Oh my god. I can't seem to get anything done lately, no matter how hard I try. Uh, that's the punchline. Oh, that's the punchline. God, it's like a gut punch. What a punchline. I'm gonna put that down before 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 I just infect my audience with ADHD and depression. <laughs> Yippee. For me, who has severe anxiety, is it worth it to travel to other countries? I have dealt sometimes uh, with anxiety, part of it related to old stuff and part of it related to work. Um, for me, traveling has usually not been the most anxiety-inducing thing, because it's like your brain gets to find itself in a different context, in a way. But it also depends on the anxiety, I suppose. If it's like social anxiety, I suppose you could travel to like a more calm place. You know, if you want to experience something new, you could go on, like, a hiking trip, for example. That's probably pretty nice if you're dealing with social anxiety. Um, finding, like, doing, like, a cool road trip, for example, along the countryside of some country that has a lot of old castles and stuff, maybe. Um, so there are definitely ways to plan around it if you're dealing with social anxiety. <clears throat> Loads of love from the UK. Clicky, thank you so much for the two. You beautiful bean. Heart sticky, thank you so much for being a noble asshole. You beautiful bean. Mwah. Absolutely amazing. Mm. So yeah, Garfield minus Garfield. Absolutely wild. I love that subculture. So good. Hello, Clicky. Just want to say, I think you're amazing. Love your channel. and think you're really sweet keeping you. Thank you so much, Witch Medusa. You beautiful bean. What a good name. Did you have to write papers in uni? Yeah, I did. I think only my thesis is like officially published, though. But I don't think... I mean, I wrote papers and essays and stuff, but I don't think I bothered publishing any of them uh, publicly, because they were the stuff I did to get through it, kind of. None of them were particularly passionate. Uh, Haley Fox, thank you so much for being a last. You're beautiful. Being, mwah. <clears throat> 
I click you to see a cup of tea from Daddy England. I actually got a pack of like uh, British tea from my editor. It was really cute. We uh, we exchange boxes sometimes. We did that for Christmas, for example. So I send a bunch of Swedish stuff and some Moomin mugs and stuff that is like very like fun collectors thing that everyone go crazy about. And I got a box back as well. And one of the things I got was uh, was British tea, which was really nice. <clears throat> so I've been drinking that for the last while. And the bags are really big. I have a bag here because sometimes I use them twice because they're so freaking big. <laughs> <laughs> what does the title mean? Don't jump scare us. It it just means hello, come in and talk to me. I want friends. Clear what is your favorite type of tea? My favorite type of tea? It what is a uh, What is my favorite type of tea? I had one that was like uh spiced with apple and cinnamon and it was just like drinking apple pie. It's probably not something I would drink every day. I think stuff like that gets old if you drink it all the time, but on occasion, really nice. I don't know where I heard this one, but it's good. Childhood equals cosmic minus horror plus existential minus horror. Adulthood equals existential minus horror. Old age equals body. Oh, body horror. Maybe not body minus horror. Body minus horror. It, sound, ooh, it sounds vaguely familiar. I'm not sure where it's from. Thank you so much, John. <clears throat> Hey, Click, thank you for entertaining me from all the way back in quarantine and providing worthwhile advice I use every day. That's so cool. Cinderbones, thank you so much for the five, you beautiful bean. Mwah. Click, which languages do you speak? How fluent are you? I mean, English, obviously. Swedish is my native language. And I speak German. I wouldn't consider myself fluent. I would consider myself on the level of, like, uh, you know, a child, essentially. Which is really frustrating because sometimes I find myself in German conversation and I understand everything just fine. I can reply, you know, basically. But it's like I lose 40 IQ when I try to speak German because I can no longer be witty. I can no longer use like a extended vernacular. I, can, I can't do any of these things. So it feels like I just became like a really basic children's book uh, in my way of speaking. And uh, yeah, <laughs> frustrating, <laughs> but uh, still fun. Easier when you're drunk, somehow. Hallo aus Deutschland. Hallo deutsche Leute, wie geht es dieses wunderschönes Abend? Mm. Hey Click, do you hear that the UK is banning gender-neutral toilets? That's weird. I would expect them to do the opposite. I mean, I, I talk about this in videos sometimes, but whenever I worked in an office or went to uni, for example, we pretty much only had neutral bathrooms. You know, we just had a bunch of bathrooms in a row that were just like a small room, not a stall, like a room with a toilet and a sink in it. And like, eh? The only time I really had gender bathrooms is in like international restaurant chains and one bathroom at my uni that we used to use a lot, uh, like the, the building itself we used for parties a lot. So one of the bathrooms was a urinal just for efficiency because, you know, you can pump a lot of people in and out fast when everyone is drinking beer. But... That's kind of it. You know, most bathrooms in offices and stuff were always just neutral bathrooms. I, it's weird to me that they're making such a big deal about it. <clears throat> Thank you for being awesome. Thank you so much, Harry. You're beautiful being for the six months. Es geht mir sehr gut, danke. das ist wunderschön. How far did you get in JoJo's? I think I got to the part where it's uh, the girl in the prison and a few episodes in. Do you enjoy Pokemon, but want a couple of twists in the genre? Then I would recommend Cassette Beasts. Interesting. Well, I am a sucker for Pokemon, though. I really am. Have you ever seen a sugar glider? Not in person. Only in video. But I would love to. They are adorable. I heard they're quite stinky, though. So they're not great pets to have at home. But uh, <laughs> they're really cute. They're really cute. I saw this viral video of someone that found, like, a small, weird little creature that was just, like, it looked like a bean. Just, like, a weird, half-translucent bean. And it started growing up, and turns out it was a sugar glider baby. <clears throat> so cute. So it had, like, a super loyal pet because they nursed it from, from an infant. It was so cute. Stanky marsupial. <laughs> Very stanky marsupial. Team Star from Pokemon Violet are just me and my LGBTQ friends shoved into the game. <laughs> oh my god, that's so good. That's so good. 
making cottagecore village in my Minecraft world like you suggested. Hell yeah, sure, that is so good. Cottagecore stuff is the best in Minecraft. It's so good. It's so good. That's what I go for in like Ark as well. I, I, I hate uh, progressing in the Ark like tech tree because I think wood looks the best. <laughs> so I did that for my last playthrough. I just put like a really cute wooden house on the back of a Quetzal and that was my base. And then I was like, oh, do I really need a fabricator? It's so big and ugly. Oh. So I'll probably just end up modding it, honestly. So I can just make all the advanced crafting stations very small. You get 150 million dollars, but you can't use a barcode scanner for four days. Would you do it? What? what? You can't use a barcode scanner for four days. Like you can't blip anything in a store? Is that what you mean? That's... I mean, that's easy, though. What do you mean, I can't... What? But when it's not you using it if you just, like, buy stuff and just go through a regular checkout. Well, that's so weird. Or I just order everything online. Don't use a barcode scanner. I'm not sure if I understand, like, the the twists. But thank you for the five, you beautiful bean. I do hope you have an amazing day. <clears throat> or maybe it's a reference to something. Maybe it's a reference I don't understand. <laughs> Does YouTube ever get repetitive? Or are you stressed about running out of ideas? Generally curious. Honestly, I don't think that far ahead with video ideas. I'm usually like two videos ahead maybe of the ones I upload. So right now, for example, I have, I published the last video I had uploaded as a file. And then I have two more videos that are with my editor right now. One bingo and one uh, traumatize them back. So I'm usually like two recordings ahead of whatever I uploaded, which is nice because then if you get sick or have a bad day, you have a bit of a margin. But uh, <clears throat> um, uh, repetitive, nah, sometimes maybe. Like with any job, sometimes you have days where you just don't feel like it, and that's okay. That goes with that goes with everything, everything I suppose. But uh, so far, no, not really worried about it. Not in that way. And I think, like, if you run out of ideas to that extent, to that extreme extent, I think then you would just feel kind of done with what you're doing anyway. So I think it would be natural at that point, if that makes sense. I know some people easily get desperate if the channel starts doing slower and stuff. And I can definitely relate to that feeling. Sometimes it does feel like you're holding on, kind of like, oh, no, it can't slow down or anything because algorithm and toss me out and that. Uh, but uh, at this point in my career, I wouldn't say it's a day-to-day -day stressor in the same way it used to be. I used to be more worried about it in the beginning, because you had lower margins and everything was new and fresh and risky and YouTube was being weird, so... I think nowadays it's, it's quite manageable. There is a red pill that allows you to go back in time and fix all your mistakes, and there's a blue that tastes like blueberry. Which one do you take? Uh, probably blueberry. I, I don't know, fixing all your mistakes sounds like, uh, sounds like it's gonna have some repercussions. Unless you have, like, a really big mistake you wanna fix, right? You know? What software do you use for your D&D maps for your campaign? It's called Incarnate, the one I use, but there are a bunch of different options. Um, that's just the one I found. It costs, like, 20 bucks a year. It's quite good. You get a hundred million dollars, but to break up with OT, what do you do? No! There is no price on true love. Greetings from England. Click love the videos. Thank you so much for the two of you beautiful people. <clears throat> I'm honestly hoping for some more positive subreddits. I get why stuff like r slash insane parents is fun to many people. It still brings me down even if click is the one talking about it. I, I try to mix it up. Um... I think it's also like the trends on YouTube right now. And I also kind of enjoy doing it, if I'm gonna be honest. It's fun to... It's fun to make fun of insane things, if that makes sense. Um, but I try to mix it up sometimes, or some subreddits I just read, like, memes. Like, I still do hole-up videos, for example, which is just, like, weird moments or, or funny posts, you know? So I try to mix it up. One of your videos, you mentioned Igelkot, and the way you say it is adorable. It's not my favorite Swedish word. English is hedgehog. Yeah, Igelkot. It's very cute. I used to have an Igelkot back when I grew up as a kid that lived underneath the porch where I lived. And we would give it sliced fried potatoes and milk. And it ate it. It was adorable. It was so cute. It was like one of those moments where there's this wild animal that almost becomes a pet. Like it doesn't live in your house, but it's very used to you and you can feed it and stuff. 
you know, one of those like half pets. <laughs> Super cute. I do think YouTube is one of the better platforms for promoting smaller creators. Yeah, I think for you can definitely get bigger faster on, for example, TikTok or Shorts, but it's also much less lucrative and it's much more explosive also on the way down. So <clears throat> it's not as consistent. But YouTube is way better at, support, at uh, promoting small creators than, for example, Twitch is. Twitch is hopeless. I've heard of people that are like, try to get into streaming and they're streaming for like two years straight for zero viewers, you know? On YouTube, you will most likely get at least a few views on something. It will give you like a small chance. Even if it's hard to break through in like the mainstream algorithm, usually you will get like, on occasion, a video that gets a little bit of views, you know? It gives you a slight chance, even... That doesn't mean it's easy, uh, but, uh, <clears throat> yeah. You made me use the word libgaze way too much. I don't think I've ever said libgaze. <laughs> I mean, until now. There used to be a hedgehog that went into our house to eat our cat food. That's adorable. Free pet. That's so good. That's so good. You raised the bar for being a decent human being. I mean, I'm just a dude. Honestly. I'm just some Swedish dude that reads memes. Honestly. I mean, it's for... I think having a platform is always, like... Good in some ways. In some ways, it's like, ooh. You know? Because sometimes I feel like, you know, I'm just, I'm just some dude. I don't want people hyping me up like I'm some kind of... A, perfect person just because I have subs on YouTube. That's weird, because I fuck up too, you know? And I would rather... I mean, I'm not saying that's the that's the purpose of the message, but, but the vibe sometimes is that I would rather have people expect you not to be perfect, so when something happens they can be like, oh hey, you misunderstood this, or you made this wrong or something, and I'd be like, oh shit, my bad, I can fix it. But sometimes, <clears throat> especially on places like Twitter, people will assume malice right out of the gate. And that can get really tiresome with the, with the creator industry. At some point, I realized, I think that has to do with channel size as well. At some point, after a certain point, people forget that you're just some dude. Like, I very purposefully, even when the channel grew, I very purposefully didn't really expand into, like, a conglomerate or, a you know, a bigger company or hiring a bunch of people and stuff like that because it, it wasn't what I wanted to do. I just want to be some dude that reads and talks about the things I find fun that I find online. Um, but some people seem to forget that. They're like, oh, now you have a, a gold plaque, so now you can no longer make mistake. You're no longer just human. It's like, ah, calling out mistakes is fine. Doing it in, in the way that always just assumes malice and just goes attack is like, ah, exhausting. Ugh. A happy 4-3 day for all car peeps in chat. Ken Block is missed. I have no clue what any of that means, but thank you, Dylan. You beautiful bean. Welcome in. <clears throat> hey, Click, if you're a real person, what's your real name? It's Click. My parents were really funky that way. You're not just a dude. You're an amazing role model. God, people are going to hype me up way too much for them. Imagine what my ego would be like if I if I took uh, if I took everything at face value. <laughs> no, but I really appreciate it, though. It's really cute. <laughs> Do you read Insta DMs? Eh, I sometimes scroll through them. My my philosophy with most DMs, uh, on Twitter I turn them off because it's uh, exhausting. On Instagram I kept them open and sometimes I scroll through them. I typically don't reply unless it's something that is like important, if that makes sense. And, and the reason isn't because I don't want to reply to people. The reason is just on Instagram it opens the DM permanently when you just reply to something, which is wild. You know, it's like having a like a live chat with with countless amounts of people uh so uh eh not a system i like <laughs> it's weird so uh sometimes i scroll through it just to make sure i don't miss anything important but uh it's not a dm system i enjoyed using it's it's not for me and on twitter you just get way too many people that demand things from you all the time so i tried to have my dms on twitter open for a brief time like a couple of months ago and uh, I just closed it instantly. It was all trash. All of it is trash. <laughs> okay, not all of it, but enough of it is. Um, and uh, I don't know. I don't need 13-year-olds on Twitter trying to micromanage how I run my channel. That's... No. Nah. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good, fam. <laughs> uh, 
Damn, your parents were hippies. Didn't know you were born in the 60s, 70s. Yes, indeed. I look really good for 54. Do you want subtitle? Do you want subtitles for your videos? Uh, don't really mind so much, honestly. I mean, I know some people appreciate it. The YouTube auto-generated ones have gotten quite good, though. So that's pretty nice. I've had some offers on it, obvious, uh, from time to time, but I haven't really taken anything up so far. Do you have advice for starting out a YouTube channel? Uh, I would say general advice. It's like, do something you think is fun, and don't expect too much too soon. Because for most people, it's, it's a hobby. And for the people that do it as a job, it started as a hobby as well. Everyone start, starts off uh, with, with it as a hobby. So that's a pretty good thing. And turning hobbies into a job comes with a bunch of downsides. So that's not always like a feasible path. Oh, hi. Hope you're having a nice day. Lily of Norway, welcome in. Thank you for the 34 months. Gosh darn. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lau. Love your videos. You talk about random topics so passionately that I enjoy them so much. Thanks also for your lessons in statistics. Oh my god, yes. Statistics is the kind of field that everyone usually hates. I kind of like it because it's always connected to reality in a very pragmatic way, and you can always draw it. You can always make it visual, which I've always enjoyed with math. It makes it way more uh, comprehensible and easier to explain. I find a lot of creators, when they get big, they lose touch with reality. Never change, click. You know, one of the things that I think makes it good is that most of my real-life friends I had from before YouTube are still there. So when I hang out with friends and stuff, I'm not some kind of, like, utober or anything like that. I'm just the same dude I was before, which I think keeps you grounded and also keeps you sane. <laughs> because so sometimes, sometimes when I've been spending too much time online and only been scrolling Reddit and Twitter and stuff and making videos and materials and, you know, you get sent down some, like, uh, you know, drama rabbit hole in algorithms and stuff. And, and you just go out and have a beer with a normal friend, and you're like, Oh my god, this is so refreshing. Like, I was I literally going insane there for a couple of days. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think that helps, honestly. And I think another thing that helps to not let something like YouTube get to your head is, for me personally, is the fact that I started doing this as a job when I was already, well, I don't want to say old, but older than some people. I went full-time with YouTube when I was, like, 27, I think? 27? So, I had already gone through, like, uni. I had already had a couple of jobs, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, I think I had a reasonable adult perspective on life once I hit YouTube. Because something that someone told me... Uh, I'm not sure if I agree to 100%. I think it very much depends on how you live life around YouTube. But there is a risk when you do a job in media or in uh, as, as like any influencer adjacent job that you stop maturing the moment you start doing it full time which i think is kind of a risk and part of that is because i think some people are very connected to their younger audience for example so it makes you kind of stagnate you know even if you're 25 you have to make jokes that 18 year olds like for example um i think it can be many reasons for it so i'm not sure if i experienced that myself as much because I think I was already past a certain point once I started doing it full time. But I know that can be a risk with doing this as a job for an extended period of time. Hey, at the click, do you read Insta DMs? I've already replied to that. Is that chat delayed? Maybe. I have like two, two chat windows. It's weird. <laughs> but yeah, so I think in my, in my instance, I was just lucky that because I'm not sure how I would handle it. Like if I got a million subs when I was like 17, you know, how would I have actually handled that? Would I have, like, lost sight of anything? Would I have been demotivated to even finish school? Because it's like, uh, oh my god, they already have YouTube figured out. Why do I need a real job or whatever? You know, so um, in that way, I think it made it easier in a way. Hey, Click, I watched your videos so much that my brother think your intros was a notification in my phone. And I think that's funny. <laughs> Sorry for my English. I'm from Argentina. Your English is absolutely fine. Thank you so much for the 200 Rs, you beautiful bean. How would you spend one million dollars in 24 hours without donating it to just one charity? All, and also not be left with any possessions when the 24 hours is up. Random riddle question I found, lol. Curious on your input. Donating it to just one charity. I mean, with the formulation of the question, I could just pick two charities that I like and just spend 500 grand on both. You know, but, but I'm guessing that's a bit of a cheap workaround. I guess that's more of a... more of a... 
this workaround on the formulation itself. So just not toss it at like random charity, I suppose. I think in that case, if you can't keep anything for yourself, um, I would either pay off loans for family and friends. I would uh, buy items that can be used for charity, but doesn't have to be donated in the moment, if that makes sense. Like donate just one charity directly. Maybe you can do something like, uh, you just go, you just go to like Amazon and buy a shitload of toys and just send like the uh, the shipping address to you know a uh, charity that works with uh, supplying kids with things in like uh, in in desperate areas for example stuff like that um, maybe that's still counting as donating to charity I don't know <laughs> but stuff like that if you can't donate to just charity I think uh, I would be charitable to individual people instead I got a video of ducks on the for you page on TikTok uh, one day and sent it to you hope you enjoyed oh that's so good thank you so much queen for the five you beautiful bean ducks are always an amazing amazing creature stacy thank you so much for being a lasso you beautiful bean this one is all for you Mwah. funnily enough the statistics was the only part of math i passed with straight a's way back in high school that is amazing that is so good hell yeah <laughs> Sadly out of school right now because I'm autistic and school uh, thrash me around and my parents don't like it. So they're keeping me out till they find a good one. Oh, that sounds nice though. It sounds like you're, I mean, not the experience, but it sounds like your family is on your side. And that is amazing. I do hope you find a place where you where you feel like you fit in better. I know a couple of people from growing up that, uh, that had like uh, classes they went to when they didn't feel like they fit into like the regular classrooms. And from what I know, they turned out okay, and they and they liked their experience there. So, I wish you the best of luck. Discovered your channel having COVID. Just wanted to say your humor and videos helped me pass the illness with ease. Greetings from Barcelona. Welcome in, fervent, you beautiful bean. I do hope you know your stay. Uh, Kyochan, thank you for the two. Quack. <laughs> Click, you landed in a German video. That was a weird crossover. I saw it. I saw that video. People sent it to me. It's so good. <laughs> It's my shitty mobile game skit ad impression. So good. So good. <clears throat> you are the therapist of the internet. You have built one of the strongest, most amazing communities on YouTube, and you have literally helped hundreds of people. I'm autistic, and you helped a lot. That is so sweet. I mean, I like the community that it's formed. I'm actually kind of surprised the community is as good as it is, if that makes sense. Because almost ev any community I see online is like has like bad aspects to it if that makes sense like al almost every single one i see and maybe i'm just biased because i i think your audience also reflects who you are as a creator but i really don't have a lot of complaints with the community that we have here it's really nice if you were to pick what animal you would be uh if you were human what animal would you be wait if you were to pick what animal you would be if you were human but then i would be human what am or do you mean like a <laughs> do you mean a furry <laughs> I don't know what that is. Mjoy, thank you so much for being a noble lasso. You're beautiful being this one is all for you. Mwah. Started watching you recently, and we love your vibe. Such a good human. Bobo, welcome in your beautiful bean. I do hope you enjoy your stay. Is there a translation for the stream into Quackanese? You mean like duck language? I'm not sure if YouTube subtitles support duck language yet. They're a bit behind. Click. We're a community built on plushies, memes, and wanting to hug creatures we shouldn't. Of course, we're weirdly wholesome. That is actually true, yeah. And a bit satanic as well. Absolutely gorgeous. Could we do something about this in acceptance month? I think that would be nice. Which month is that? The only thing for me, I think, when it comes to certain topics, is I've had, for example, autism subreddits requested before. Um, I'm just not sure if I would do it justice. Like, I've, I have autistic friends, for example, and I have people in the community that are autistic, but I don't have much experience with it myself. I'm not sure if I would do it justice. That's the thing. It's, like, it's not my specialty. I am definitely supportive of it, but I'm not sure if I would do it justice simply because it's like kind of far outside my expertise or whatever you want to call it, if there is an expertise in meme reading, but... <laughs> Stacy, thank you so much for upgrading your membership to Noble Lasso. That is amazing. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Autism, Autism Acceptance Month, Monday, April the 1st to Tuesday, April the 30th. Ah, so the month of April. Personally, I'd be happy to give feedback on questions. Oh, that's so sweet. 
Hello, been a fan for a few years. Absolutely love your content. Thanks for all the laughs. Cyber, thank you so much for the five. You beautiful bean. Do you have any pets? Uh, right now I have, well, it's a family pet. It's Simba, the fat cat. <laughs> That's like the only pet that I have any sort of ownership over right now. Uh, I did also capture a mouse during winter that uh, would have been really cute to keep as a pet, but, you know, it's not healthy for an animal if they're used to being wild, because even if they get tame, they still have the reflexes of a wild animal, meaning that they're, they're not gonna do very well. So we let it out. Let's see if I can find it. Hold on, do I have it saved somewhere? <clears throat> I know I recorded videos and stuff of it somewhere. Um, let's see. Oh, it's really far back. It was so cute, though. It was so cute, because it broke in to uh, into the house and was running through the walls, and it got into one of the pantries. So what uh, what we did is that we bought a couple of those traps that are like non-lethal. It's like you put a bit of food in it, and it's like a, a button inside of it or a switch. And it steps on that switch, and uh, the lid falls down at the end of the trap. <clears throat> so it's like a little cage. Uh, let's see if I can find it. So non-lethal, and then I just... And, and there's some... Someone told me there's some kind of law in Sweden that like if you catch a mouse, you're legally required to kill it. I don't give a shit. You can call the cops if you want. I drove it out into the woods where it's not gonna hurt anyone. So, uh, yeah, whatever. I'm not gonna kill a little mouse. Like, God. Uh, let's see, where, where can I find this? It might take a while to scroll back. This was this was a little while ago. Uh, let's see. But I think that rule more applies to, like, you know, if you if you let it out in... Uh, I mean, I imagine the rule is made for, like, if you, if you live in a very... Uh, tightly built area, like if you live very central in a city, for example, and you just toss it out your window, well, then the mouse is obviously just going to break into the next uh, next building, um, next building next door, right? So I guess that's what the rule is for, like don't catch a mouse just to let it out again, because then it's just going to break into your neighbors instead. But uh, <clears throat> in my case, I, I was literally taking a trip into the forest where I let it out far away from where it could break into any house. So uh, in that case, I'm not sure if it's particularly applicable. Uh, let's see. Do I have it somewhere? Dear God, it's so far away. Where is this? My phone camera roll is just clogged with memes, alright? So it takes a while for me to find things. Uh, okay, let's see. Further back, I guess. Dear God, okay, I'm just gonna start this. Oh, I found it! I found it! Oh my God, I found it. So here it is. This is what it looked like in the morning. When we found it inside of the trap. Look at this. It's so cute. It's so adorable. It's a little Swedish forest mouse. It's really cute. Look how fluffy it is. Look how fluffy it is on this picture. Here you can see inside the trap where it was it was it was just vibing. Look at that. Oh, it's so cute. It's just a little dude. It's just a little boy. It was so adorable with his big ears and stuff. <clears throat> and then during the day. I, I realized, because I was working during the day, and I didn't have time to drive it into the forest until the afternoon. So I realized that the trap it was in got quite dirty. But I had two traps. So what I did <laughs> is that I put the traps right next to each other, uh, like this. So you can see here on the left side, well, maybe it's the right side, depending on how mirrored this gets. But on one side, you have the mouse, and you see that it's been pooping a bunch and that kind of stuff. And on the other side, it's a fresh trap where I've also prepared, like, a little water bucket and a bit of cheese and all that kind of stuff. So I opened both the traps and just put them next to each other. So we climbed into the other one and then closed it. <laughs> so it was, like, in a happy, clean trap with food until it was time to go to the forest. <clears throat> and here is what it looked like when it got into its clean trap. Look at that. What a good boy. What a, what a, he's just a little dude. He's just a little dude. Look at how happy he is. He ate freaking everything I tossed at him. He was so greedy. It was amazing. Uh, here's a little video, I think. Uh, it's sideways for some reason, but he really liked Parmesan cheese. I don't know why the video is sideways, but you get the idea. He really liked Parmesan. Look at that. What a good boy. He's just eating his Parmesan. <laughs> Look at him just munching with his tiny little hands. He's so adorable. Look at that. That is so good. And you can see his little water bucket right there, which is like a lid from a bottle. I just filled it with water. What a good, what a good little goober. And then, let's see. Then I have a video where I let him out into the forest. <clears throat> There's what it looks like. 
So here I just brought him out into the middle of the woods. And we're just like fixing the trap here. Opening it. And here he is. Out he goes. So cute. So freaking cute. So at this point he was quite familiar with us. Like he wasn't particularly scared or anything. But you can tell that he still has wild reflexes. It's like, oh, he's so cute. Look at that. He's like sniffing your shoe. And then he's like, doing, And then he's off. And then he found himself a little hole to nest in. Right there in the forest. So there he just climbs and finds a little hole. And he makes a new home. So freaking cute. So freaking cute. So, so that was an experience. That was the mouse that uh, broke into the house and was caught using an unlethal trap, fed cheese, and then let out into the forest. <laughs> so cute. So freaking cute. I'm overcome with squee. It's so adorable, isn't it? I took a newborn mouse to the wildlife rescue, poor thing. That is so... I hope it did okay. I hope it did okay. Five grams of mouse. Yeah, they're not big. They're not big. Been having your videos as a YouTube mix. Been keeping me sane while doing things that are boring or tedious for my autistic butt. Ooh. Ooh. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you're enjoying the videos. Welcome in. I do hope you enjoy your stay. Have you read or watched Good Omens? I know what it is, but I haven't indulged in it yet. But it's on my on my to-do list. Thank you for being wholesome and welcoming. Thank you, Knit and Cat Boodle, you beautiful bean. And for being a member for one month, that is amazing. Show us the cat. He's not here right now. How has YouTube affected your vocabulary? Frick. Yeah, I say I say things that are like my made-up slurs. More IRL than I used to. <laughs> Out of reflex. Uh, so that, that's kind of interesting. Let's see. What time is it? Yeah, we've been streaming for quite a while. I should head off and grab myself some dinner so I'm not too tired tomorrow. Thank you all so much for dropping by here today, you beautiful bean. I do hope you enjoyed the little videos and pictures of the mouse as well. It was quite the adventure. Plushies coming out soon, both gay ones and duck ones. It's going to be quite, uh, quite a vibe. Any plans for a gaming stream soon? Probably. I've been meaning to do the gaming stream. I just had my cold, so I didn't want to, like, talk for too long uh, during streams. But probably in the near future. Thank you all so much for dropping by. Have an amazing rest of your day, and I will see you again in the very near future. Take care. Mwah.